And welcome to the Bowls New Zealand coverage of the National Intercentre. We're broadcasting live from the Burnside Bowling Club. I'm Dave Worsley and joined by Kevin Hickland. And uh, Kevin, we have Nelson against South Canterbury. We've actually got underway just a few minutes early there. Uh, they were really dead keen there, Kevin, to get underway in this singles. And you can see there the two competitors at a very sunny, notice that, a very sunny Christchurch today. And you can see it is. Who we got on screen there, Kevin? Well, we've got the new New Zealand player, Kelvin Scott, the new blackjack. You just see him there with the yellow jack in his hand. Just scoring a couple then up against the very promising young up-and-coming player from South Canterbury, Tom Tairoa. Uh, very, very uh, accomplished singles player. Kelvin Scott, of course, about to make his uh, blackjack debut in about uh, 10 days' time on the Gold Coast in the multi-nations. And he will certainly be... Uh, an integral part of, I think, New Zealand side going forward as we see the Kelvin Scott, one of the most consistent players in the country. Could I say, Kevin, that's a long time coming for Kelvin to represent New Zealand? Uh, well, it uh, seems uh, that way. I picked him years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been a uh, very, very much a great supporter of uh, the ability that Kelvin Scott brings, and that's what I mean. He has that first bowl effectiveness. You know, they're 11 2 already in the race to uh, 25. Sitting behind Tom Tairoa is uh, the legend of South Canterbury, uh, both in cricket and bowls, Barry Andrews, uh, who has done so much for sport uh, in the South Canterbury region, of course, winner of the New Zealand Pairs. Uh, ironical that uh, uh, the marker here, Kevin Gore, uh, also won a New Zealand Pairs title, also at Burnside, um, as did, in fact, Barry Andrews, the uh, South Canterbury man. He won his New Zealand Pairs title uh, with Dave Hanson, uh, also playing a few, a few years ago uh, at Burnside. Now, you'll note with Kelvin Scott that uh, his delivery is what some would say uh, strange, and it's very difficult to tell on the mat exactly uh, what hand that Kelvin actually plays. But he's, he's had that delivery for a number of years, and believe me, if you talk about Mr. Consistency, uh, this guy certainly brings it. He's a, he's a classic player on this uh, sort of speed of green. He's, a, he's got a big shot variety, and a, he's not a big driver, he's not a big attacker of the head, but plays with great uh, weight control. And in my view, going into a New Zealand side, he brings what I would call, especially if he's going to play in the fours or the triples, he brings that concrete in the middle of the team that solidifies, I think, the team very well. And, you know, I'm looking forward to watching uh, being in Australia in a week or so's time and uh, watching Kelvin in action uh, on, on his uh, much-deserved call-up for the New Zealand side. And, of course, we are talking about much-deserved. You know, we've got a number of players in that side who have finally cracked it. Crystal Lee, Raymond Martin, Lance Pascoe, uh, to name those players particularly, uh, been given their opportunity, and to me, it's all uh, all exciting times. And this round, of course, Dave, is uh, a very, very important round uh, in the in the centre because this uh, round will see very much of who makes it through to the top eight to the quarterfinals, which is, I presume we'll be bringing one of the quarterfinal well, matches yes. uh, later on this <laughs> afternoon. So, of course, all these teams, Nelson, I know overnight were well positioned in this in their. Uh, in that particular section, but it's about finishing one and two, because that gets you through to to that quarterfinals. Tom Tara just going to drop past the Kelvin Scott bowl. Well, just if it's a little bit confusing when you look, you're seeing another white bowl go past. That is actually for the other rink, isn't it? The, well, that, that mark there, that's actually, I believe, uh, that's a camera mark. Right. Uh, uh, for Alex was telling me, Alex Reeve was telling me the other day about it because the reason why I asked the question today because in times gone by, we've we, we've played the jack, and it's been a no kill situation, and it goes to either one of the marks on either side, and that's what I thought it was, but it's not, as we see Kelvin Scott showing his class yet again, down on that forehead side of the rink, draw right on top of. The Tom Tarawa bowl. Barry Andrews sitting there, as I mentioned before, been very much a mentor to uh, the young South Canterbury player. And believe me, this boy's got ability. And I, uh, well, Colin might be able to check, but I've got a 
feeling he might have been one of the New Zealand age group. He's in the New Zealand under 26 side to uh, to, to shortly play in this uh, in the Pacifica event to be held here in Auckland. I'm sure he'll be able to uh, go and find out that information for us very shortly. But I think we do have the pairs. Yes, we do have the pairs in the top right hand corner of the screen. Yeah, well, very good, very strong. Uh, if you if you to add up the number of games that these two guys, Gary Watson and Murray Scott, played for Nelson, they were. Um, they're evergreens, as are Sean O'Neill and Roger Glendinning. Sean O'Neill, of course, uh, been a, a, the South Canterbury player for a number of years. Roger Glendinning, formerly of Canterbury, now living uh, in, the, in the South Canterbury region. Gary Watson, uh, the son of the legendary Mari Watson. Uh, uh, and Ken Watson, of course, and Ken won a New Zealand Fours title. Um, playing at, at, at Wollstone, I know exactly because they beat us in the semi-finals. Um, playing with the legendary Morgan Moffat, and uh, Ken was in that side that won the uh, won the New Zealand fours. So Gary Watson brings a tremendous pedigree uh, to the sport, great tremendous lead. And Murray Scott has been part of the Nelson scene, representative side for a number of years. Now, Kevin, we do have a different view today. Now in the past, we've seen across to the a unit across the road, and uh, yes. I'm sure they've loved us seeing them. And we've also had the club room, so we've got a slightly different view here from our cameras. Well, we're in the mid, literally in the middle of the the green, whereas we were uh, last two days we were out to the extremities, the sort of the Ian Rink scenario. So we're in a mid, literally in a mid position, which is uh, which is good. And here is Scott on the backhand. And if you, you know the, you know the good, the coaches will always rate their players at this level, or let's say New Zealand level, where you want them to have an 80 percent, at least an 80 to 85 percent effectiveness with their bowls. Kelvin Scott will deliver that game after game after game. Well, we saw that in the uh, mixed pairs in Alexandra. In fact, in the semi-finals, he didn't actually believe for a second that he'd lost. He was sort of looking, shaking his head, and, and meanwhile, uh, the Northland player who was playing for Takpuna, and her name will come to me, she played Sky a Sky Renee. That's the one. And she was jumping for joy. I mean, literally jumping for joy. And meanwhile, Kevin Scott's with hands on his hips and just looking, thinking, how do we lose that? <laughs> He's a very deliberate player, Kelvin. Yes. He's one of the... The other really good thing about Kelvin is what he actually brings to a team off the, off the uh, right. rink as well. He's very, very much a guy who, he, he's just a really good guy. And, and and he brings so much to a side here, trying to get to the jack close on the trail. There he is, and that's about the that's about the effectiveness and consistency that we're talking about that Kelvin Scott brings. And you'll note there, Dave, that he played, the, uh, played his bowl with weight, which meant he didn't lose his bowl running away with weight. It just got to caress the jack, so to speak. And if you're time to right, you're playing under immense pressure consistently because Kelvin Scott will move the jack around. He'll change things around. Yeah, you can see it's moved from uh, one side. Of the boat. This is very nice. Yeah, uh, he's going to get the jack clean, is he? Back to himself. He's holding a couple. And so, he'd love to hold on to those two shots, but he knows and I know and everyone knows I'd never leave Kelvin Scott or a metre and a bit to draw, you know, to, to draw the shot. And that's the... Uh, the ability that, that Scott has got. Here he is now. So Calvin Scott with the white balls, and you've got uh, Tom Tyroa there with the, I guess, the multicolored, the light blue and purple. And on that backhand, drawing back down towards the jack now. <laughs> and, uh, exactly what you said there, Kevin. Uh, and uh, the toucher so just to lower the jack. and. That's the, you know, now, I just wonder, though, for Tom's sake, whether to get a bit of confidence within him to change the scoreboard opportunity. He's got two seconds here. Kelvin Scott's got no bowls left, and I just wonder whether it's worth him having a drive at that, that bowl to see if he can dislodge the shot bowl and get an accounting. Because he's going to have to draw within six inches, nine inches to get to the shot. Here he is on the backhand, and he is playing that weighted shot to try and get to... This shot bowl, that's a great attempt. Just went past, but that was a, that was certainly the right shot to play. Oh, look at the uh, score here. It's going to go up 
what, we're just looking at the one there, aren't just we? Just the one, yeah, 14, 14 2. The no, thing you'll also see about with, with Kelvin Scott is that uh, once he gets happy on, on a length or whatever, you, you just won't see him change. Yeah, he's one of those players where he doesn't uh, methodical. He, yeah, perhaps. he is. He does it very deliberate. He doesn't try and move things around to try and change. It's uh, unless he finds himself. Uh, yeah, he, he he'll stay on a hand all day if he knows he's, he's uh, and he's he's also one of those players. If he's if he's happy with the hand, it means he's going to drop a shot here and there, he's more than happy to do so rather than, well not happy, but he's content to do so rather than try and fight his way on, 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 and lose it, lose his direction on what he's comfortable with. And Kevin, the, the t-shirt prize, are we still going with the uniform yeah, no, of Taranaki? No change. No Taranaki's change. still number one. Okay. Yeah, no no change to that. And Marlborough are running second at the state. So. All right. Because those are just pretty standard really. Well, from what we've seen so far, we're going with Taranaki with its beautiful Mount Taranaki and also the water towers and various other parts of the region plus the names of all the clubs looking pretty stunning. Well we might have to give South Canterbury a wee bit of a close up look because I'm just wondering on the front part of the uh, South Canterbury shirts whether it has got some names or got something on the sure we'll get a bit of a zoom in emblem, of something in there here is Tom Tyra on his backhand very deliberate young player, stays down on his bowl, which is always a good sign. Green, I'd say, I haven't had a check at this stage, but looks at about 17 seconds. Very little win. Remember, we did have a lot of rain yesterday afternoon or into the early evening. Well, you know, it's the advantage that Burnside have that you have a good green keeper. The rain makes them very little difference because, you know, he had worked on it last night and again this morning. And they'll have a good surface that they've played on. Here's Scott again now, just trying to get down inside that bowl of time Tarawas, which is shot, and will do so. We'll finish Jack Level just sitting alongside Jack, just goes by that shot on the backhand now. And you look at the front of that shirt as he comes up, you'll see it's got some, let's say, I don't know, might have some historic South Canterbury. Well, what are some of the bigger clubs around South Canterbury? Kiatoa. Right. Of course, one of the, one of the famous people that uh, played bowls played bowls out of the South Canterbury was the great uh, racing car driver, uh, Leo Leonard. Uh, household name in the, in the 60s and 70s was uh, Leo and uh, uh, still plays, plays a lot of bowls down on the Gold Coast, in fact. And all those on the Gold Coast today, especially to our Kiwis, Gary Lawson and, and Shannon McElroy. Shannon playing, of course, for... Uh, Helensvale, Gary playing for Broad Beach. Uh, good luck to them in the finals uh, being played at Musgrove Hills today in the Queensland pennant finals as we watch Scott relentless. Oh, that is, like you said, just so consistent. Doesn't quite get to the jack, but so consistent. He's on a two there, must be a two. From yeah, three. It, two. It's, it's two, and I see Auckland there playing on the green behind there as well. They were going well in their six, and I see in the overnight scoring. Now, not that I'm going to try and give you what the scoring updates are. Please just go to the Bowls New Zealand exactly. website, and all of the results, round by round, game by game, points for, points against everything, uh, is there on the Bowls New Zealand website, and you'll get everything you need to know. Now here, looking for the jack, looking for the trail, close to the trail as the young South Canterbury player just going by, had the wait to get the trail. Now, Will, Kelvin Scott, go deeper on the rink this time. He's just pondering now in the mat. Do I try and get a bowl a metre and behind? I'm leading by 14 to 2. And it's a three-shot trail if he gets it. So it looks like Scott's going to change his set. Now, of course, Kelvin Scott, and, and, and I'll say now, if this is the Australians, and Kelvin's a wee bit like that, so Kelvin would be quite happy to play the forehand here and to get a touch, endeavour to get a touch on the jack and move it around the corner because what it does, it takes away that, that shot. But going for the cover, though, is uh, Kelvin Scott. <coughs> so looking for Tom Tyrone now to follow that was his last bowl, which only just missed on the trail. 
Controlled weight to get down to the jack. Again, staying down. That's very good delivery, but he's under the head. That hand just dipped into that last second, just gets that steerage on the ball. I would say it's two. We'll see what Kevin Gore has to say, the marker on the changeover. And he's getting up the lollipops. Can't quite see it, but it should be a two. And I believe it is. It is, yes. two, it is two shots. Yes, it is. And in the pairs, it is the Nelson combination of Gary Watson and Murray Scott who are leading Sean O'Neill and Roger Glendinning, the South Canterbury, by five shots to three. So, Kevin, uh, if you were the South Canterbury coach, what are you going to say to uh, Tom? How are you going to bring him back into this? What I'd be doing is I'd be looking at the fours board as well and seeing how we, and knowing, of course, how we sit on the overall table. Are we a chance of making our way through into post-section play or, or not? So if we are, right, your job uh, really... Tom, let's just disregard the scoreboard. You just try and score as much as many as you can to uh, pull that differential uh, back. Because looking at the peers' game at this very early stages, anybody's game, and we don't know, of course, how the fours go. And then, you know, the last thing you want in any one of the, any one of your disciplines is to have a runaway, so to speak, because it just makes it so much difficult. Then, uh, you know, when it comes to the overall. The, the overall picture at the back end. Uh, Kevin, uh, I'm just thinking a couple of days ago, your picks on paper, how do you uh, recall that going? Just trying to remember your well, picks. Well, you know, Wellington, and you know, look, look, if we took a look at the men, you know, Wellington, uh, yeah, very strong side. You know, they would have to be, in my, uh, still in my view, uh, would be the, 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 number one, the number one side. Now, remembering, of course, you know, Auckland are the defending champion because the last time we played, they, they, they won it. And they've got a very strong side with the likes of Mike, you know, having Mike Galloway, Tony Grantham, Jamie Hill, Jordan King, a national uh, title holder of the past. Very, very strong side. So, you know... To and Wellington, who have they got again? Oh, Wellington's a very... It's a, it's a power pack side, really. Robbie Bird, Seamus Curtin, Stephen Ditford, Caleb Hope, Andrew Kelly, Finbar McGuigan, Raymond Martin and Blake Signal. So it's a... Yeah, <laughs> that's that's it's, really good as well. Yeah, it's it's a very very good side. So, you know, they, they now but, hold on, this sounds parochial. Uh, the other side who you never ever count out at a, at, in the centre is a side like Taranaki, who may not be full of stars, but if you talk about an overall team, Craig Defari, Dean Elgar, of course, who's won a New Zealand title. Uh, Hamus Kapi is part of the New Zealand uh, Maori team for the up and coming event. Morris Symes is in that side, you're an evergreen and a former New Zealand player. Uh, so, you know, a very, this very good, well in. played here. Two lovely balls here from young Timaru boy. And Kelvin has gone past on the head by a good metre. And now we we'll see Scott now on the forehand. We'll just try and draw down. If he gets contact onto the jack, he'll be happy. But it's. Uh, and now there, you think he's going to play the forehand and he plays yeah, the backhand. Yeah, because, he's trying to read which way he's going. Yeah, he, he's, he's, the, sure. he's the most difficult player in New Zealand to read what shot he's going to play. And, and why is that? Is that just the way of his, del just his, 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 his delivery? But, you know, as any coach will tell you, Jeff, it's, it's not it's bad, though. Pretty good. But as any coach will tell you, whatever your delivery is, and if it, if it works, don't, you know, you don't change it. So here's the chance now for Tom Tara on the backhand to make three of it, definitely holding two shots. I've been impressed so far in this particular end by Tom, the uh, South Canterbury bowler, Tom Taroa. Just going to go by, he won't mind that, he's over the head. All right, this is Calvin Scott now, and uh, what is he going to do on this particular He'll try and get the sit on that back bowl, uh, the counting second bowl, and behind he'll try and get the sit to that bowl. Very interesting the way that his arm just comes across at the end. It's not a flick though. No, but he he does the same thing every bowl, so that's what now. Break in, is it going to come back enough? No, it's not. Sit on his own, still like 9 2. Viewer, Taranaki viewers, you'll be pleased to know I had an electronic conversation with uh, Mike Kernahan. New Zealand coach uh, this morning 
and it was it, it was all very positive and it was all relative to Briar Atkinson's game yesterday uh, against Selena Goddard. And it was uh, a nice comeback, wasn't it? It was, and and uh, it's and it was great to hear. She's going to make three of it here as the youngs well played. Tom Tara, that's definitely three shots. Let's just do a check there with our marker, just in case. Well, he seems fairly straightforward on that one. No there discussion. Are, there, one, two, three. There it is. So it's pleasing to hear that Briar's coach is actually Morris Symes. There you go. And the points that I uh, sort of raised with Michael in an electronic conversation, he actually watched the game yesterday as well. And the points that I happened to bring up with uh, with Mike, uh, he uh, he agreed totally and shared those same sentiments. And the really good thing is that there's some really good, solid things to work on yeah. with this young 18-year-old out of Taranaki. Uh, who, believe me, at some point in time will play for New Zealand. She's d definitely got the ability just to get a couple of things to iron out and under the tutelage of Morris Symes, that will happen. What was really interesting about her was she did start off appearing to be a little bit nervous, which Correct. is fair enough. It's understandable. And yeah, no problem there. However, she did manage to work her way back in and even challenge a little bit against Selena. Oh, Morris. I thought she showed excellent maturity in that, in that uh, mid backstage is the game remembering it I think it was 15 one down and came back and it finished up I think 25 17 or 25 18 around about that around about that score line uh, but what you, what uh, young Briar Atkinson was uh, more than capable of doing was put consistent consistent ends together and we spoke about that 80 percent factor before Dave and that's and that's exactly what she did so you know, if I've already seen one thing uh, from the Cinder Centre, because I always look at these events as, sure, you want to see your top players performing, but I always like to look to see is who, who are the next players yeah. to perform. And to me, um, Briar Atkinson yesterday uh, put a hand up big time. And we've potentially got another one of those uh, players here as well. If, Absolutely. Uh, oh, look at this. Well, these last two ends have been fantastic for him. A three, the previous end, and so far, it's a chalk on that one and a one. Just to close on Briar Atkinson, what was, to me, was the very pleasing thing about it, and I'm not going to try and say what the score was, but the game after she played Selena and got beaten, she went out the next round and had a very convincing win. Well, well done. So that, to me, is a player who's got it right up to his... Yeah. his I'm sure she's getting some good advice from Morris Sykes. Oh, absolutely. So here's a chance here for the uh, young South Canary player holding the shot with that front touch. It's Kelvin Scott with two bowls lower the jack. Won't see anything too adventurous from Kelvin. He, uh, if you look at the board, say, right, I'm 16-5. You, cha you chase me now, young fella, and I'll still... You're not going to play every end perfectly, but he's... Uh, very nice stays down on his delivery he doesn't move the body across so he's gone out on that wide side he'd be disappointed with that but you know getting perfect weight to get down to that counting area and finishes jack level it didn't end up that bad considering how wide it was and it was, how slow it it was, was very wide three quarters of the way down so that's showing that the green is actually uh favorable to the draw do we have that little patch that you spotted of the last couple of days. Do we have something like that? Not middle? yet, but I'm pick, I, I reckon there's one I'm coming down this side now where young uh, oh. Tom Taro has played. That'll be, so that'll be second shot now. There's a patch about three quarters of the way down the green, a light patch in fact, where I reckon that line is just about through the middle of that patch back to the centre line. We'll see the bowl in a moment. And about now, about there. Right. I see a little bit of patch of grass. What yeah. we're referring to yeah. is just a lighter patch. And which there it is. is. Oh. This is, well, it's not quite a two so, this angle. So just to where the chalk line finishes up there, just out from that, just out from the chalk line on that side of the ring, there's just a bit of colour in there on the green, and that's the perfect line to where that check is now. At, at that breaking point, that visualisation breaking point, and I'll, I'll hark on about that word visualisation because 
Now you look at Kelvin Scott there, he looks, looks, steadies himself on the mat. Does it the same thing every time. Get it's up. His feet close together yeah, initially. Yes, head up. And he's not looking, you notice, he's not looking at the head. That was something interesting that was explained to me, that a lot of players will look at the head, whereas someone like Calvin there will look he's at, at his bow and his He release. was looking at that breaking point to where that centre line is. Yep. And that's exactly, and he, and he finishes up is with the second Is there a right shot. or wrong on where you should be oh, looking? I, I think that's the right. I, I do think it's the right because, you know, the other thing is, is as well with Kelvin, although he's got a different delivery with the hand, you know, one's feet also make a big difference on like what angle the feet you have the feet at, of where, just like a golf swing, where it's going to go. You know, if your feet are straight, well, you're not going to get that natural. So that's why the angling of the feet, so as it's just a swing, a natural. And you, you watch Kelvin Scott, He'll do the same thing every bowl. Yeah. And it's about that, that... Same expression just about all the time oh, as well. Oh, you don't that, get that change. No, no, it doesn't <laughs> change. No, it doesn't change. No. Just the one there, of course. You can see the last two ends have, in fact, been won by the South Canterbury bowler. That is uh, Tom Tairoa. It was a three and a one. And yeah, you note there, don't see how he just stays down. Yeah. He comes, just like a golfer, comes up after the, after the point. That way there, your arm is not going to move in, inside the body and you'll ju be duly rewarded oh, as, as with, with, a, with a touch of. The minute you come up early, your hand comes, your arm comes up with it and, and nine times out of ten, the bowl will turn itself underneath. Well, that's uh, similar to a lot of racket sports. Where Absolutely you, you, it is. You coach in tennis to keep your head level. Correct. Because if your head comes up, so does your shot in your Correct. arm. Same with uh, squash as well, and, and just about every racket sport. So, forehands mainly at the other end. Well, we've got backhands on this end. Yeah, well, it's a matter of finding they can use then the same track both ways. It's just, you know, that's okay. really... See Brendan there from Bowls New Zealand. Is that an imitation to try and show us that he's working? No, I think he's actually probably gaming. <laughs> uh, no, we shouldn't say that at the moment. I've got the computer there. I don't yeah, know. Exactly. But we, 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 He'll be putting up the scores. <laughs> that is one of his jobs. There is uh, putting those scores in and from all around the different venues. And I believe we have a number of different clubs around uh, Christchurch. There's seven clubs in total been used today. Um, right down as far as that Rangiora, Rangiora. They, they're using. So about 70 k's up the road? or down? Yeah, it's a good, nice drive to Rangiora. We have Papua Nui, uh, Fendleton, you know, those are you know, some of the clubs that they're, uh, that they're using. Uh, Belfast, a uh, lovely little club uh, they, they're using. So, uh, yeah, a good, a good smattering around. Uh, that's for most unusual what we just saw there. From uh, Kelvin Scott, that should very much, a, very much a rarity. And if you watch now, Tom Tara, it's exactly what we're talking about. See, he's well, let's have a look at his feet. I'm going to yeah. be curious how his feet uh, stack You'll up. You'll see his feet start angle out on that. There, you see that foot go across, across. So that's indicating it's going to be a backhand. Yeah, and, and it's on that angle. So if he was going to go for a forehand, his his back foot, his right foot would then be slightly be a different, just an angle across differently. Just see one of the legends of Wellington arrive there. Of course, a former Wellington player and Wellington selected, John Earls. So we believe it's a two at the moment for South Canterbury, if it stays this way. So Kelvin Scott. John Newell standing there talking to Barry Andrews, long-time Wellington board member, played for Wellington for many, many years, Wellington selector out of the Wilton Club. <laughs> Kelvin would be disappointed with that. And John Newell's, by the way, Dave had one yep. of the interesting job. He was the sh sheriff of the High Court. And, and Do we the, have those in yeah, New Zealand? Yeah, he's the sheriff of the High Court in Wellington. That's... Wow, yes. that is a, a title. Uh, you just want to wear a badge everywhere. <laughs> well, he's it. the man that used to organise the the march of the judges to Parliament when the opening of Parliament with a 
all the judges in there retire from from the back bench of pub, <laughs> literally. Well, know. that's not very far, and no, it's you, not. you can stumble that one. That's correct. Well, that man there holding the red folder, John Earls, he was the man, <laughs> the sheriff, who was uh, and has the had the empowerment to jail you. Right. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm lost for words. Yeah, under old British law, that's uh, yeah. He was the uh, uh, sheriff of the high court, and his nickname is Sheriff. <laughs> well, of course. Yeah. Are we looking at a three or uh, perhaps it a could two? be two? Uh, definitely two, I would say. Uh, Calvin Scott's had a look, and you know, I think Calvin will be be more than happy if he can get second shot because he'd be disappointed with those those uh, front bowls. The last couple of events, he's, he's lost them both, albeit with a three and a one. And on this occasion, it looks as though he's got two against him. So changing hand to the back hand, to the uh, forehand. Playing with searching weight through the front bowl, well off target, well off target. He'd be disappointed with that. And definitely a one to the South Canterbury player. We'll see where that... Possibly a two, have we got a measure? Definitely. Right, definitely two, I would say. Let's have a look at the marker there. Who is our marker again, uh, Kevin? The marker we've got to this, uh, this afternoon's game, Kevin Gore, former New Zealand Peers winner, won the New Zealand Peers with Mike Small, of course, who was uh, here uh, oh, marking marking yesterday. yesterday. Yes. So now looking at that third, the measure coming out for that third shot. Another interesting facet you wouldn't be aware of, Dave, with the High Court, and I wasn't aware of this until John Earls took me on a conducted tour through there. In the High Court in Wellington, they have got they've got paintings there of all of the High Court judges over the you know, years and years and years. And it was three. Well, that's I'll see in but a impressive. moment. A three, one, and a three in the last three years. We'll just uh, recheck on that score going up. And there we go. 16 eight, oh, it was two, a two, two. two. And the paintings of all of the High Court judges, which are stand all around the uh, in, in the High Court, and you're standing there in the dock, but they're painted in such a way, doesn't matter where you look, their eyes are looking at you. <laughs> their eyes are looking at you. And I went in there one evening, John Earls took me in there one day and showed me, and it's a very... Uh, intimidating, very, perhaps? Very intimidating feeling, because we watch now. Time to uh, 11 3 now in the pairs to Nelson. That's the combination really? of Watson and Scott. Angling his body there. Yeah, he's. Yeah, well, we'll see what'll happen, how long it will hold for. And it's just going to get there. Well played right to the jack. It's not as though Time Toro is not playing badly, oh. but it's just. It's that early on in the, the match, that consistency, which Kelvin was, you know, managed to get on top of the young fella. And you'll see the writing on the front of the shirt there, the South Canterbury shirt. Yes, we do. Uh, we might have to ask for a photo yeah, of that. Yes. I'm sure Brendan will be uh, Tamara, a photo. Bra bra Brendan, we, we want to know about the front of the South Canterbury shirt. Searching for the jack. And the finished jack level. Kelvin Scott will be happy with that because he's, he's had a few sort of not to his normal quality. Um, over the last few ends. Well, we've had a three, a one, and a two, all going to Tom Tauroa. Just asking uh, the position of those bowls was Tom Tauroa asking the uh, market Kevin Gore whether they were jack level or where they were located. And yes, they were jack level. So here is the young South Canary player. And, uh, fairly bright there now. That but, sun definitely, yeah, uh, yeah. No, he filters for the cameras, yeah. or not, but uh, and he's just still on top of the bowl, just going to go by. But you can see though already this morning, uh, Dave's better. There we go. Dave, We're all sorted. How well that green is running. Though. The bowls are just arcing back towards the centre line uh, all the time, which makes it. You know, don't forget, it's a, at the interesting phase of this event, to all you people watching. And look, just please go to the Bolt New Zealand website for both the men and the and the women, and all the round by round results, game by game, will be there. The scoring, the differentials. So as we get into this this last phase of section play, you can see who's in the running to make it to to uh, 
quarterfinals this afternoon. And we should say a thank you to uh, sponsors, but also, uh, I mean, Somerset being one of these sponsors of Bowls New Zealand, but also to all the people behind the scenes. And that means, uh, well, we're talking about in the kitchen, we're talking about the controllers as well, all the results getting typed in, just about everything, really. It's uh, something we should really appreciate. All the people behind the scenes at all the different clubs as well. And you said uh, that there was seven clubs, and uh, that's a fairly impressive effort. Well, it is, and you know, I would say full marks now to Bowls New Zealand with you know, the scoring or result system of which they've got. It enables for results to be into the headquarters, looking for the jack, looking for the jack trail, just goes by. Where's uh, Kelvin Scott? Because in the old days, you know, Dave, round by round, like you could be waiting. I'm pleased they're making me feel younger and younger. So thank you very much. Matt. <laughs> well, getting the results sort of published was quite a long, drawn out, tedious environment. Imagine all the no. trees that got cut down. For all a, a lot were well, forests, actually. Forests. Yeah, exactly. Um, but now with this new draw program, which Bowls New Zealand are, are using, it's, it's sort of instantaneous and just makes it for the. And, you know, for the people at home, you can see very quickly, round by round, uh, exactly how your how your club mate or team, how they how they're going, how they're situated. Well, not only that, it just makes everybody. If you've played, you can see how you're progressing, rather than actually waiting until correct. I don't know what time at night or turning up the next day. Not oh, good you've gone ball through. here, just this falling in love with the jack. Sitting right in front of the jack, so Scott will endeavour to try and imagine. If I want to lose his way, he can get to split onto those bowls, gets a touch on the jack, he's got bowls out to the side. And of course, Tom Tara has got no bowls uh, on this particular end left, trailing 16 8. So a two here for the uh, South Canterbury player uh, just sort of makes a bit of a difference, makes, oh, no. makes a difference to. Uh, yeah, the trend of the match will be his fourth end in a row if he uh, does take this. I mean, we've had three, one, two, and now looking possibly for a two again. So here is Scott. Certainly got it out wider with that weight. This is close. Just might oh. get one clean, does so. so. Just the one. Takes the one out, gets reduction. So there'll be one, another one, two. The South Canterbury player to 16-9 in the race to 25. And Kevin, what about in the pairs? 11-3 uh, to Nelson now at the halfway mark of uh, their, well, their last round. So who's up for uh, Nelson? And who the Nelson the... side was with Gary Watson and Murray Scott. Two very, very uh, well-performed uh, players out of the Nelson, uh, the Nelson Centre uh, up against equally to extremely well-performed players uh, at all levels, both national title holders at various times, Sean O'Neill and uh, Roger Glendinning. Glendinning used to play out of Canterbury, played out of the uh, New Brighton club. Now it's uh, and it, uh, uh, in South Canterbury, Timaru, Caroline Bay area. Uh, so yeah, now, now playing out of, out of South Canterbury. Tell me, Kevin, uh, the Scots, not the country, but the uh, Scots, is everybody related? Is Calvin related to... I'm just trying to think, there there's seems to be so many Scots around. I don't think Calvin is part of the legendary right, okay. uh, Central Otago, um, Dunedin, Scott. Uh, I could be corrected, but I, I don't think he's part of that. The legendary Scots. As legendary well. Scots, OK. Yeah. Well, he just has to make his own name. And now that he's in the New Zealand team, he needs to make his own name, albeit with many national titles already. In fact... Has he got national titles? I'm just uh, yes. That. Come close. Yes, he, 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 he has. Uh, has he won the national singles uh, That's right. the year before? Um, there's the Nelson Giz the Gisborne girls behind there waving to somebody. <laughs> they're having a wonderful time. They've got a cook with them, and now they're more, they, they had uh, uh, white bait, the whole box and dice so out on the... <laughs> the uh, uh, I'm not sure who the cook is that's with them, but they've got their own travelling uh, cook who's come down with the Gisborne East Coast side. And, uh, yeah, they were having a, having a great time. <laughs> wow. 
that's, that's impressive. I thought they had a good time in uh, Centro Otago. Uh, well, with it, I around. think it's fair to say as well, Dave, with the hard times that the people of the Gisborne region have been through over the last couple of months, to get away uh, playing the sport that you love with your, your mates, uh, it's a great, it's, it's a great, it's great for them. It's fantastic yeah, for exactly. them, and, and they're thoroughly enjoying the, the, the trip away. Well, next time you see or speak to John Macbeth, ask him about uh, how he and his uh, fours team came back from, I think it was Waipiata, and how many via stops some, they made. Via a lot of vineyards. Uh, well, yes, and uh, local little uh, pubs, etc. Yes. Uh, yeah, just, uh, well, there we go. I have a little uh, message there on the shirts. Just, uh, I'll let you know about the shirts in the meantime, if you want to have a look at this uh, particular bowl. Uh, another Calvin Scott going to get to the jack, is he? Yes, he will. Not quite rolls back, just rolls. But it's the shot though. And I uh, can say that there is no writing uh -huh, on the uh, on the shirt. Uh, therefore, South Canterbury, it is a particular design. I thought they might have had a, some sort. Of, well, wouldn't you think a Caroline Bay design would be? You know, well, we don't know that it's Caroline Bay. It's no, it but what I'm saying is that it would be. You would think if you're talking for something to yes. have on the South Canterbury shirts, Caroline Bay with the sound shell uh, would be. It's, uh, yeah, we have Calvin Scott on the one at the present time, and uh, just a message as well that the results from this morning will be coming through shortly. They're just chasing a couple up to make sure that they've got them all and. Uh, of well, course. you're at the point, Dave, as well, as you know, want to make sure yeah, exactly. and check and double-check that yeah. uh, you've got everything correct. Kelvin Scott trying to get a touch on the jack here. Won't do so, but goes through the head into the catching pen. A good bit now. I know exactly what Kelvin Scott's next shot's yeah. going to be. Okay. Uh, he's got you, you said he doesn't drive that often. No, he doesn't. And you know, the, the, the essence of a really, really top player is being able to play with the the right weight to give you the right results and and so thus he doesn't go flying the hit he'll just play this next shot depending of course what Tom Tara does he will just play the, the next shot draw weight just to try and get that touch on the jack four shots that's what that's what Kelvin Scott's thinking right now if I move the jack six inches I've got four Let's take a little look here. Tom Taroa. Oh, he's got the bowl out on the narrower side, I think. How long is that going to hold for? Going to go now and will go. Gates open here. <laughs> Not quite so. And unless Calvin Scott mucks it up, he's got this in with a one. He's got one. He's got a safe, he's got a safe one, but he's got a chance of four. And that's what he'll be playing for. There you go. You've given away the shot. <laughs> I've picked it now. <laughs> it was very easy. It's exactly what he'll be playing for. He's only got to draw to the jack on the touch, move it three or four inches, and four shots. So here is the soon to make his blackjack debut, Kelvin Scott. Trying to get to the jack. Got a chance of four shots on the trail. Too much. Just not going to hold up. But that's the shot he was playing for. And perfect weight again. Absolutely perfect weight. Just half a bite. He's got that rice smile yeah, on his face. We saw the face change there. Yeah. <laughs> the expression. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he knew that the gate uh, became slightly ajar there. And he was just one bowl away uh, with his with his green, that would have given him that the result. Was Kevin Gore, the marker, resplendent in his uh, Burnside uh, shirt. He, when he won the New Zealand title, he played, he played for, he always been Burnside player. Moved from the south, moved up to Christchurch a number of years back, and has been a faithful and uh, long-serving member of the. The Burnside Club for for a number of years. Well, we did have four ends in a row going uh, the way of the South Canterbury player Tom Taroa. We had a three, a one, a two, and a one. I see that next board though. I don't know. I don't know who it is. The next board there, 
uh, they played 11 ends, 11, 11, 11, all the way across on the on the board. <laughs> I just saw it as it went by there. So back to that draw, that consistency that Scott shows. Own, you know, he owns the length, owns the shot. And that's the key thing in singles, especially with that first bowl. It was a nice little comeback there for Tom Tadroa. Just forcing his way back and put a little bit of pressure on Calvin Scott and managed to get the one at the last end. And this is the slowest roll you could possibly imagine, but it keeps on going. Well, it's interesting with those multicolored bowls. Yeah, it's deceiving. Isn't well, it? a couple of the Australians, Aaron, Aaron Sheriff's one and Aaron Tees is the other one. Um, they look like psychedelic pies. Yeah, and Macbeth despises them. Don't they, mention yeah. this to John Macbeth, yeah. but he despises uh, them. Uh, when you're commentating, I can assure you, looking at them, it's, there's going to be short and it just roll. Yeah, it just keeps, roll. It's deceiving. <laughs> Very deceiving. Very deceiving, yes, indeed. Yeah, don't mention that to Macbeth, but he despises them. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, they, they've, we, uh, I've, and I think John and, John and, and, uh, Grant and Nisbet were with me. I forget which event it was that we were at. And there was a particular set of bowls. It was a, it was a, a female player, I know that much. And it had eight colours. Oh, OK. That, that's eight. And we took a photo for the Tamara, got them on the end of the ring and, and you know, different views of them. And there was just this bomb of colour on these. <laughs> Well, here we have Calvin Scott with his white bowl, which he's played with for a, a, a number of years. He's not a bowl changer, is uh, Calvin. And to me, that again highlights something about the player. He's not looking for other options. He knows he knows what works for him. And a touch on the jack just sits it off the centre line. You know, like Marlene Castle, I'll use as a classic example. Um, there was the changes of bowls over the years. Played all of her 16 years of playing for New Zealand uh, with classic twos. Played the same bowls all the way through. Now, Chris Leave, who is about to play for New Zealand in the multi-nations, yeah. he's playing with the same bowls that he played with when he was a member here uh, at the Rawiti and, and Anihanga Bowling Club. He's never changed his bowls in Australia to any of the Australian makes bowls, still plays with exactly the same bowls as what he started with. That's, is that through luck or does he just like the he feel just, of the he, weight? Just, he just likes them. We well, did actually have uh, one of the bowlers at the fours who used to make a bowls that no one else uses anymore and I can't record it but it'll come to me. Uh, one of the bowlers out of uh, Narwahia and he uh, was a very good junior. It wasn't Rocky Gregory, was it? Yes, it was. Yeah. And he, the make that he top. uses said no one else uses this. Yeah, I remember he did have. Well, in the. I'm not, I'm not Just doing a little bit of a. That far away. I'm not going to say in the old days, but. Before the net, these bowls came out, there was, wasn't a great variety of bowls. And there was a phase which we went through in New Zealand and Australia where bowls were put on the lathe and shaved. Right. Illegally. Oh, okay. Oh, very much so. Kevin, okay, we're going to come back with that a little bit more in uh, just a moment and uh, just take a little bit of a break. Well, there we go. Uh, nice little sponsorship there from uh, Somerset, one of our great supporters of bowls around New Zealand. 
In the meantime, though, we are at the uh, Burnside Bowling Club, and uh, Kevin Hookland, what can you how can you summarise what we've seen so far in this particular singles? We, you know, we saw a great sort of movement from Calvin Scott, then a little bit of a comeback over four rounds from our younger uh, competitor there at uh, Tom Tairoa. And now is it Scott just looking a little bit strong again? Well, it's the old story, the 25 in match, of course, you know, things will change around a, a, a wee bit. But at this level, you know, Calvin Scott, we know, has got that consistency. And he would never be panicking um, if he's dropping a one or, or a two. It's when he, if he uh, starts to drop a three or four that, that he would... He would uh, start to be, be concerned and you know you're never out of the game you know Tom Tara can put a couple of good ends together and you know who know, who knows but it, and it, the key of being a good singles player and you know, this is where Kelvin Scott really shows this is about that word consistency and if you are going to drop numbers that you're not dropping threes or fours or you're not dropping them end after end so to speak and uh you know, Kelvin Scott, don't get me wrong, he, he'll be disappointed himself up with that last bowl where I d just about say a non-pressure bowl and he's a metre and a half short. And, and he'll, be disappoint he'll be disappointed with that. And I'll look now for that self-adjustment. And Robbie, uh, Robbie Bennett, just with the note that you just sent through to me, uh, look, I'll just check with Colin in about a moment, but I do know that the results are going up. Yeah, they, they are. They've just been a little bit delayed. In fact, I think we're seeing some of them go in right now. There's Brendan. Hard work in the uh, computer, not gaming. Uh, he is actually putting in the results. And a little bit of a message about uh, Hensight Alpha. Was that the uh, bowls that Riker uses, I believe? Uh, that's uh, the Alpha, yeah, well, no one wanted them. Yeah, it's it for him. That's what he actually said. And yeah. Alexandra said, yeah. I'm a bit embarrassed to say, but no one else uses these. Yeah, except they, for me. Uh, that's correct. They uh, yeah, hence like brought out the, uh, you know, uh, is that correction that we were just doing, yeah. spoke about. <laughs> you, you're predicting this very well. Now, if you can just give me the lotto numbers, that'll be fine. <laughs> uh, also, an earlier model of the narrow bias came out around about 2010. Yeah, there was the, you know, so hence like the first ones to move. Well, Drake's Pro, I think, one of the first to move. Hence, like, were very, always very, very uniform in, 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 in their bowls and didn't really like changes. The Hensel like, the Hensel family were very adamant in maintaining their, their, their brand. Uh, so they, they moved to the Classic 2, which became the most commonly used bowl uh, out of the Henselite stable in, let's say, late 70s, early, early 80s. But then they went to a, a variety um, of all sorts of bowls, and, and Henselite as well. They made bowls for New Zealand conditions and for Australia and for UK. So here's Scott now. This is putting the pressure on. Now, the good thing about this county in here, right here, uh, Dave, if you're a young Tom Tara, you haven't got a line to play no. to. Because both of those bowls, Jack Lowe sitting right in front, Jack High sitting right behind so the, the margin of error to get into the counting or reduction reduction area it's a real challenge so here is Tom Tara trailing 18-9 out on the wide side yeah very wide and that's a very very difficult hit to play to because to get to the result he had to get under his own short blue bowl to get down to where that second shot of Kelvin Scott so, so Scott corrected, and thus another two shots, 20 to 9, 13 to 4 now. Nelson leading South Canterbury in the pairs. And I'm pretty sure if Nelson were to hold on to these two wins, looking at how things looked at the back end of last night, not knowing what happened the round before, uh, but Nelson, I'm picking, would be in a strong position to be uh, one or two uh, in their section. We can now say that the results for the men are definitely now published from this morning. So they are going up and the woman should be up any moment. So if you do want to check on those results, how do they do that, uh, uh, Kevin? They just, just go now to the Bosch New Zealand website and then, uh, Robert, for your sake as well, they're all up there, the men's ones, which I know you'll be interested in. Uh, um, they're all up there now for that previous round this morning. 
And of course, it's 26 uh, centres, isn't it, for the men and 25 for the women? Correct. And remembering, you know, we're waiting for... Um, if games go to the full time limit, let's say they're out at Rangiora, you know, and you're collecting results in, and yeah, it's just, it, it, it is time consuming. But in saying that, you know, remember, it used to wait half a day to get results. So exactly. It, so, uh, yeah, be it's, patient. It's not all bad, I can assure you. A lot of scores. And just a little bit of a correction there with the pairs. It's uh, the score's just been updated or corrected, if you want to put it that way. And 12 uh, 5. It's the extra score there. It is Nelson at 12-5. In fact, the women's scores are actually up as well, so there you go. We're all up there for everybody. Yep, everything's all done. Well done to our importers. I'm sure there's a nicer title than that, but uh, well done to them. Scott holding one, leading 20-9. to nine. When you get to that 20 mark, it's got to be, I wouldn't say a relief, but you, you feel as though you're there-ish. I mean, you, you can do. still get beaten. You do. You've got to get to that 20. Once you pass that, it's it's a margin. Isn't it's it? a psychological thing, yeah. uh, you know, that you... Um, what, what you can, what Kelvin Scott can afford to do here is he's got the one there. Uh, he can play the board here and really say to Tom, well, mate, I've got the shot a few centimetres away from the jack. Um, you're going to have to play the shot to, to get the shot. And it's just, uh, you know, I'm sure Kelvin... Wouldn't be concerned if he had to score five singles to get that to get home. It's a matter of uh, owning the length, owning the mat, and uh, owning the head. But Tom Tara, he's not going to be done. It. Look at this; he's not far away. He's a bowl away on the roll. On Scott, I'm sure. Well, no, I'm not going to predict what Kelvin Scott was oh, going to do. No, well, I, I thought he would change it. To, um, I, I thought he may change his hand here and, and try and get. Uh, well, we'll see. No, at this point, well, his head might tell you, no, he's not. Um, to try and get a metre behind the head, would be happy to have the deepest bowl, I would say. Why wouldn't you go around on the, the backhand side? Well, that's why I thought it would, because if you do this, you give the, you give the shot away. <laughs> but it has given another bowl on the head, so he'll be quite happy with that, knowing that he was a bowl narrow and could have rolled the time the Tauroa bowl into a shot. Now there's a opportunity on the backhand for Tom now to play through those bowls and for him to get a touch on the jack. He's got a target bowl to play to that last bowl of Kelvin Scott's. Here he is out on that backhand but you can see though uh, Davey out of the hand. Too early. Always narrow out of the hand and it's the danger of it's the danger of trying to steer the bowl to a line rather than visualisation. Look where the line is and go from there. But then can't you over-visualise? Uh, well, some people might say yes, I say no. Um, but it's be purely because visualisation creates consistency. That's to me is the... And those two, if, if you've got a good delivery and you've got those two things going with you, the key thing is you're not going to drop threes and fours. You might drop a one, you might drop a two but you're not going to drop, if you are going to drop a big number, the opposition's going to have to play a shot to build it into a big scoring opportunity. You're not going to, if you've got those things in your game, you, you're not going to open the door very often for big numbers to be scored. Now, we look now, Scott's holding the shot. Is that a one or a two? What do you think? He'll be happy with just the one. He's got the back bowl in there now, so... Probably is just a one, although it's difficult to tell on this angle. If the white bowls, we know we have one closest, yeah, probably at, what are we going to call that, seven o'clock is uh, the uh, bowl of uh, Tom Tairoa. Yeah, he's got a, his weight was fine on that uh, last, his last attempt. Just got to you know, get that head, visualize out where the breaking point of that bowl is, and worry about. If, if you get that right, the result looks after itself. So, no, he's not. He's gone early again, hasn't he? He has. Well, it was a bit closer than what we thought, I think. Yeah, well, he played it quicker as well with that particular ball. He was slightly quicker.
So we are looking at a one or two. What have we got? Just the one. Just, just the, the one. one. Kevin Gore indicating there. Just the one shot, which now takes a. Uh, well, Kelvin can go out on one end now, of course. It's not that that's likely, but you know, he's sitting now on 21. Looking at that pair, it's what a chaotic mess there. Uh, who's got what? Well, <laughs> look at it. It's just. I think the really coloured balls. Probably wrong. Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, I mean, it's. I think they're all looking. Gary Watson's there having a good look. <laughs> yeah. Murray Scott saying to him, he's been more conducting than the tram in 1959 out there at the moment. Exactly. It's like, well, you know, in the end, I'll wave my hands around yeah. a lot and you can just take your pick. Yeah, there's. Uh, and if you get through one of those gaps amongst that armada in front, it is two. Oh, it was two. two. Okay. Yeah. Well, we had a, we had a lollipop. Yeah, and oh, Kelvin no, no, no. Kelvin elected to go for the measure. Yeah, and, and that's uh, where Kevin uh, Kevin Gore was told, no, your lollipop was wrong. Yeah, so uh, it was two. Now twenty two nine. I mean, there was no malice in that at all. It was just like we just you're know, going to have an extra look. Well, just looking at that other Piers game, just to uh, that. All that happened with that Gary Watson ball was it just ran into that big bunch up the front. Yeah. The it's kind of like playing in snooker when you it, just decide it, to break and just smash everything yeah, apart. It was, there was no, and it, and it was South Canterbury that scored as well on that. Uh, I saw Murray Scott uh, remove one ball and see Auckland Tony Greats and is uh, oh yes in the, it, in the in the background there. So Auckland playing on that uh, on that. Uh, but of course, what's happened as well today? The greens been turned around as well, uh, Dave. You know, before we were playing, we were playing uh, road to clubhouse. That's right. Now we're playing, you know, from the from the reserve the reserve end to the Avonhead. Well, so uh, turned around, and well, today really you won't make any. Uh, at, at the present, there's very little wind. I, well, I hope they've got some uh, uh, some wind later on this afternoon out in Littleton Harbour because they've got the. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's true. Uh, that is uh, starting at about three o'clock. No, I heard the sale GP. I heard oh, Leslie Bird this. up here. Bang. And oh. uh, happy birthday, uh, Leslie. So, I, I heard Leslie Bird up this morning on, on the radio, and then uh, she's very, very excited about the oh, sale GP. Great to hear with Leslie. I'll tell you a couple of funny stories there at the Rio Olympics. Uh, Leslie and I were on the same shuttle bus quite often from out of the Army base, and. Uh, in the army barracks where we stayed, there was generally cold showers and generally the same thing to eat for breakfast for two and a half weeks. Oh, look at that. Just knocks it in a little bit further and it drops even better there for Calvin Scott. But yeah, the uh, how to try and get warm water out of showers that had perhaps five seconds of warm water. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think after that for two and a half weeks, it was... Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, great lady, Lizzie, great, uh, great company. Loves it. Just an absolute sports lover of um, of all sports. A uh, representative for New Zealand as well. Absolutely. Now it looks a, bit, a little bit deceiving at the present time. We're seeing a, a oh. bowl just looking as it, it was coming our way. He's got to be careful here, Tom Tara, because he could uh, face game here in but a moment. Carefully holding the one. Holding two. two. You think it's a two? No, I think it's two at the moment that Kelvin's uh, holding. And if this breaks inside that line right now, which it's going to, sits in the front of that bowl, one would think Four. that's three, and it's a difficult. Uh, we're just going to have a little listen as well. See it here. Okay. Well, maybe we'll hear what's going on here. Just the one down. Kevin Gore, really? Buchanan, just the one. So that would be, uh, and I see Barry Andrews, the manager, they're talking to Kevin Gore as well. Remember it happened last year, last end. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so you might see Kelvin Scott actually go and have a look at this. Not to say he was going wide. No, that's for the other rink. Yeah, I think you might see Kelvin Scott. He may just have a look at this. Oh, stays in, just. Uh, Scott, holding shot, sitting on 22. And 
What's he looking at here? Well, if he can. Well, he's been away somewhere. He's just yeah. Well, that's it. We're, we're sort of looking for Calvin yeah, Scott. Yeah, he's just <laughs> he's just coming back now. He will more than I'm picking. Is he going to ask Kevin Gore? No. Yes. No. So, can Kelvin Scott, the way he had the head situated, play for four shots? Or, well, three will do him, of course. So if he, he's going to go by. He, so he was playing with weight then, uh, Dave, to turn to, to get to turn onto one of his own front bowls. If he could so turn one of from knock the middle, yeah, to, if he get a couple of rolls onto the bowl, he, 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 a chance of making three. So it was a purpose. Absolutely, shot. it was. Absolutely. This is going to be very tough for Tom Taroa to get himself back into this end completely. Well, you know, again, he's under that line. He's steered three bowls under the line, trying to get a one-shot result. Now, anybody will tell you from a coaching point of view, you know, so he's tried to play that shot with we, bowls two, three, and four. One or two, we've got to measure. <laughs> Kevin, on. Kevin, Gore said just one right, throughout the, the head. Go this. Yeah. Yeah, that's just, <laughs> just the, the one. one this time, he agrees with it. That's the one. Of course, in years gone by. Uh, Kevin Gore and Kelvin Scott would have both played for Canterbury together at various times in the in the various Canterbury uh, representative fixtures. So tell me, uh, McElroy and Lawson, where traditionally would they have played? Which uh, centre? Traditionally, well, a lot. Well, Are you if, suggesting if, a lot of centres? If, 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 if we talked about their home base, um, Shannon would be playing at uh, Shannon McElroy would be playing at Nelson, Nelson, and Gary Lawson would be playing in Canterbury. That's a we traditional team. Yeah, there. Gary Lawson last year, of course, played for Auckland uh, and was down to play for Auckland again this year, and he and he didn't. Um, Shannon, I'm not sure whether he was actually available for Nelson, but if available, would have been playing for Nelson. He wouldn't be fairly strong team then. If you have to shift out potentially, if McElroy had played the singles and then. Absolutely. Well, Scott would have moved to their pairs, I guess. And remember, of course, they've also got in their lineup uh, Lance Pasco, who, who will be <laughs> representing New Zealand for the first time uh, you know, the week after next on the Gold Coast. So, you know, a very, very, you know, very strong side. And also, you know, in that side, in that, in that Nelson side, uh, if you talk about consistency, with, uh, you know, Robbie Reid was a former Canterbury player. He's now living up in Nelson. In fact, he's one of the, uh, uh, the one of the turf guys at Trafalgar Park. And, okay. and he's a, uh, a very, 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 very good player. Peter Hodson, of course, Peter Hodson won the New Zealand singles uh, a few years back. And in the same year, he won the New Zealand singles. And him and Jimmy Pugh from Nelson, uh, they were beaten uh, in the final of the New Zealand peers in the same year. So, and, and Peter Hodson's also in that Nelson side. So if you take the, the Nelson, then you look at the ladies, you've got Joe Edwards, Val Smith, Amy McElroy, Kirsten Edwards, who have all played for New Zealand. That's <laughs> How many clubs are there in Nelson City as such? In Nelson City itself, there's about five. You know, there's the... Well, the oldest club in New Zealand. Well, oh, this will be disputed. Don't. Uh, well, we can guarantee I'm, I'm going to say that the dispute would be between the Auckland club and the Nelson club, right. but nestled underneath the cathedral of the Nelson, uh, in the reserve there, is the uh, the famous Nelson uh, club, and it's only a one green club now. It used to be a two green club. Just lower the jack, and that's one of the. And uh, the Carillion strikes all the time throughout the day playing that. It's a beautiful setting, park-like setting, um, right in Nelson. Then they've got Stoke, they've got United, they've got Tahuna. So there's a number of clubs in that Nelson, uh, uh, Nelson area and in the surrounding areas this trying to get to the Jack. So Tom Tudor, he, he's in that in-between situation. I'm trying to save the game. And I'm trying to score, and it's just—it's 
Uh, and when you're playing against somebody like Gilbert Scott, when you know they've got a bowl with you still, it's, it's a challenge. Well, this is the thing. At the moment, looking at the angle, are we suggesting that uh, Gilbert Scott's got it with a two I, or not? I, I, that angle? I, the shot bowl, I think, is the Jack Lowe bowl sitting at 11 o'clock, 12-7 now. Tightening up a wee bit in that Piers game day. 12-7 yeah. now, Nelson leading South, we'll South Canterbury. Have a little check on that. If this does finish off this end, we'll probably switch to the pairs. We'll let you know very shortly. This is needs to get past clean and we'll do so. Well, that's the shot for sure. That's that's definitely that's, number one. That's a one, and we're not sure if there's going to be a two in there just yeah, yet. One One's the call. You might have heard there from uh, the market. Kevin Gore indicating just the one that was the shot then that last shot of of uh, Kelvin Scott resulting in shot. And what have we got? Have we got the trying to work out what's going out there on the piers out there. There's a bit of yeah, something kneeling, a bit of praying going on by Sean O'Neill and running into a front bolt. Okay, let's make sure it is still a one. Kevin Gore is pretty confident, isn't he? That it's just, no just about nothing. 24, it'll take Kelvin Scott to, all but in this race to 25 in the last round of section play of the national men's uh, in descender. Of course, the women as well, right in conjunction. Still a few little uh, waving of hands there in the pairs. Well, 12-8 now. And only four of the diff as they play yeah. in 14. So obviously, Dave, you can see the you, you see a lot of footmarks here on the green. Yes. So there is some moisture. Like, yeah, I'll it's, call it's it remained. So, I'll, say, I'll say some overnight moisture that's there. And that's, now, what's going to happen this afternoon if the sun comes out is every likelihood that green will quicken up by a couple of seconds. But you're still going to have a few little indents? Yeah, the, the, the moisture will start to drain itself out. That's moisture marking, which you can see there. Yes. Foot marking, that's because there's moisture in the green. Well, we've got blue sky there, so one would think that we're going to have a warm afternoon or a good afternoon with no wind, so we'll see that. We'll see the, the, the pace of that green change. Auckland, by the look here, they're playing South Otago over on that back green there. And Auckland, of course, going into the day, where they were sitting uh, in a... In a Comfortable position to uh, qualify, but of course, I don't know what happened in the previous round, and I'm not going to try and guess. No, no, don't, don't guess those because no, no. <laughs> we've seen enough <laughs> almost upsets. And if we start guessing them, well, oh, no, 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 this guy's not going to start doing <laughs> that. Go on. No rain overnight, but was very heavy uh, when we finished yesterday. There's a little bit of an update. Perhaps we can get a little bit of a uh, tan update there from uh, Brendan. Sitting up in the sun. Yeah, he's been sitting there for a while, hasn't he? Yes. Uh, Scott drawing right to the front of the jack. When you're sitting on uh, 24, that's, that's, that's a beautiful bowl. That's a top, top bowl. There is a gentle breeze at the moment, but nothing too significant. No, it's not. So trying to get to the shot bowl. Big challenge here now, though, for Tom Taroa, uh, Dave, because... You know, you, you, you're playing at a one-shot hit, and you can guarantee that the Kelvin Scott will make sure that he doesn't leave. Well, and he's asking how far away he is. Is he five or six inches? Get close. Yeah, and he so therefore they, you'll see him now going to his other hand. He certainly doesn't want to, and no intention of enough uh, of leaving a lean or or break opportunity off a bowl. You'll see he's gone, in my view, from what I would call as uh, deliberately wide and quite safe because he's gone past the head and sitting just outside the centre line. So really the target area now for Tom is to draw to that back bowl. If he can draw to that last bowl, follow that last bowl of Kelvin Scott. So if he can draw to that bowl, sit inside it, he is a chance of getting to the shot. He's got a good line. Just question, how's the weight though holding up nicely for him? Is it trying to get to the jack? Well played by the young uh, Timaru player. He uh, got the jack clean, well played. Laid the holding shot. 
Melvin Scott now to endeavour to uh, draw the shot to, for the match for uh, Nelson. And very nice, you might have heard Kelvin Scott then just say to Tom Tara, shot, and that's, he's a, he's a real gentleman, is uh, Kelvin. So here's now Kelvin Scott endeavouring to draw the shot for the victory for himself and for Nelson. And, of course, playing in foreign territory out there as well, Dave. Oh, this looks pretty good. This looks gonna just going to go by. Just goes, just slip past the Tom Toto bolt. I believe South Canterbury holding one. A chance to add to the head here to get to 11 for Tom Toto. Well, it's pretty well down here. How far is it going to run? Not going to run all the way down to the counting area. Certainly hit the line. Oh, Tom Tauroa holds off his defeat. Just a little bit longer. Two it is. Impressive. Nice little comeback as such. It's an end there with two. And Tom Tauroa from uh, South Canterbury. Just staying in this particular game against Calvin Scott from Nelson. Yeah, we'll see. I think not that it will affect uh, how Calvin Scott plays, but yeah, as I just about to say, that I'm sure that the young uh, South Canterbury player wanted to get down to the two metre mark, really to stretch it out. But of course, the big thing is, and that's a you got to get there first, so this is an important ball for him to stay alive in this. Well, nice to get into double figures as well. Uh, you, well, you're doing it for your team as well, yeah, your yeah. overall side. Sure, you, you want the victory for your own uh, for your own sake, but it's also, of course, you, you're just one of seven. It's a it's a victory of seven. It's not a you know it's not a victory of one. And don't forget, if you go to the Bowls New Zealand website now. All of the results of the pre first round this morning uh, are posted up there on the Bowls New Zealand website and they're all there uh, for one's viewing. And you can see how the various sides, how they sit relative to making their way uh, into the quarterfinals uh, later on this afternoon. And as we see Scott draw just jack level and remembering that it is two... Uh, from each section, it'll be two that go through, and we'll have the quarterfinals or, or this or afternoon. Finals, yeah, one of those. Probably and we'll be bringing you one of those. Three or three thirty is uh, our approximate time with that quarterfinal. And then, of course, tomorrow morning we will have. Oh, look at this! It's well played. Oh. Don't you just love that? I'll knock yours out the way, which will push mine closer. Well, it's great to see some of these younger players who, when you're up against, you know, one of the really experienced players in New Zealand, as we saw yesterday with Briarax and another youngster here, who will be playing in that same Pacifica event uh, in, in a few weeks' time. And you're playing some of the best players in New Zealand that you uh, stick to your task yeah. and give don't it the best shot and don't get overawed. Because this is close to this is close to the jack. We're sitting in the bowl. There we go. Sits right behind it. You knock mine, I'll knock yeah. yours. So I'm sure now we'll see change of hand from time Tara. And one of the reasons, of course, why it might seem a, a length, uh, a weight in between the, uh, the quarterfinal matches, remembering that players as well have to transport themselves yeah. um, back into Christ for those who. For example, qualified for, at, at Rangiora, um, they have to they have to uh, uh, travel themselves back into uh, into Burnside, have some lunch, etc., and, et cetera, and uh, get back to Burnside uh, to be ready for the uh, quarterfinals this afternoon. So there's a wee bit of travel involved in the, from around the greens of Christchurch of everyone getting back uh, ready for the semi-finals. But you can be assured that uh, Chris Lander and the team at Bowls New Zealand will endeavour to get those quarterfinals oh, Chris will be cracking the whip. Yeah, underway as, uh, 
as uh, quickly and quickly and sensibly as possible. Okay. We'll let everybody know uh, the progress there. In the meantime, this particular round, it is well, Calvin Scott back in it. He was holding match. Yeah, he is. And it'll go oh. now. I got the jack clean on the back of it and stays great. alive. And that'll be two shots. So for Calvin Scott now, what does he have to do? Play another end. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, that's it. Just playing. That. There's nothing he can really do to counter. Not us. really. Um, I, you know, you virtually. Well, yes, you can. He, he's got to draw to the ditch board. That's that's literally. Yeah, that's that's difficult. That's really the shot that Kelvin's got to play. If you're trying to get rid of he's one trying. of them, and no, you can see the bowl of Tom, of the Tom Taro is sitting up there on the front. Plus, of course, he's got one. Uh, sitting uh, in, in the ditch. Well, that's uh, uh, they're well played by the yeah, by the, uh, well, the South is Canary player resting on the on the jack in the ditch. And they're not going to beat that. No, no. You, 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 I don't know how you could actually. Well, I, I've seen various photos. I think people make them up, but they put them as a bowl sitting on top of a bowl, yeah. Yeah. sitting on the ditch. And, uh, it was two. So now at twenty. The last two ends uh, going the way of. Uh, the South Canterbury player, and he just starves off defeat. Now, look, did you notice the? Uh, the no, I didn't notice yesterday with uh, Selena, but I see the North Harbour men stand at the back of the rink there, and they've got the Harbour Bridge on the back oh, of the Yeah, no, I did notice that but, with uh, Selena yesterday, the Harbour Bridge. So, does that get promoted? Oh, well, they've the yes, that, put, that, 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 Aki, that, that, that well, doesn't put them up in the gold medal spot. That's, oh, okay. That, 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 the the Taranaki. Uh, yeah. Uh, now we can just get him to turn around to get turn around Steve. again. There it is. You can see the bridge there. And yeah. Well, coming from North Harbour originally myself, uh, certainly in the I guess the prime days of when North Harbour rugby was formed, and then when we made the final, albeit that final at Onewa Domain was a little bit of a debacle. One will never ever forget that. <laughs> no, and it was uh, a couple of my good friends in it uh, that I played rugby with and uh, did everything with. Uh, yeah, and having played for North Shore Rugby Club as well myself, uh, the second oldest rugby club in New Zealand. Correct. And uh, yeah, so the harbour thing it does still run true. Let's have a look at this one. Just if you remember, Dave, my my club used to put in the old days. We used to play North Harbour every year for the famous. Aurora Hotel toilet seat. Okay. Mar Marist versus Marist versus North Shore. I didn't know that. Playing it, North Shore about uh, the toilet seat. Absolutely, it was a famous uh, in the old days of um, uh, yeah. There you can clearly see. Oh, you could. Uh, Tom just moved, but but you, uh, and it's good to see. I reckon it's great to see them. They had a bit of local oh, identity. That don't ever suggest that anyone from Harbour is part of Auckland. It doesn't go down well. No. Calvin no, looking for the spot. jack. Got oh, it. Oh, didn't touch the jack. Oh, but it's gone into the ditch. Now, for those who may not be aware, there the, you'll see that bowl of Calvin's got got a touch on the jack, uh, and then went into the ditch. It stays as a, as it will call it, a live bowl because it stayed within the pegs, um, the confines of the rink. So therefore, that bowl of Kelvin Scott does stay alive. And if the jack was to go into the ditch, it uh, can uh, well be part of the resulting uh, counting shots. And you'll see it perched there out from the number. And it is Tom Tara who is holding the shot. And Kelvin Scott will try and get down to his own to try and get we to the... We have a very high jack at the next rink, which is actually... Is that the pairs? Yeah, that is the pairs. It is now at 13.8. It's very quite a way up the uh, the green, isn't it? It is. It's a pretty short short length time. Total, giving the to add to make two of this. 
And looking for the jack, of course, was or what he's holding to, trying to make three of it. It's and lucky. it's a good, oh, it's a touch on it. Well, good <laughs> and bad. Because Colvin Scott will now be looking for the jack in the ditch because he's got a counter, or he's got a toucher, I should say, uh, already in the ditch. So here's now Colvin Scott on the mat, leading by 24 to 13. Down three on the head, but the chance to get to the jack on the on the backhand trying to play down to that jack needs to start moving now he's not far away watch this oh. gets one of them clean <laughs> shakes the head he thought he had it i thought he had it certainly looked on uh, a good line to the jack not to be two shots for the nelson pine nelson pine singles player now leading 24 shots to uh, 15 in this race to 25 so it's been the last three ends have now actually been won by well south canterbury tom taro and he's got to be i don't know if he's really suggesting that he can make a comeback from here but it's certainly a comeback on the scoreboard and it's certainly slowing things down isn't oh, it? oh well three it's, in a row well another thing which is happening not knowing of course which is what's going on before us and we may have had a little bit of a disruption there just around the review um, well, I'll let you know about this in the meantime if uh, you just take a little look there and we could have some more info. So the pair's now at 13 8. So, you know, as they play in 15 of 18. So that's, that's, not a, that's not in the bag, so to speak, for, for Nelson at this point in time. I'm sure, they'll be feeling quite comfortable. But, you know, five shots, but, uh, and there's, not, there's enough ends for it to be picked up. And now you'll see Scott will endeavour to get that first bowl effectiveness that we're talking about to get right on top of the jack with this is first bowl. Then on 24. We may have had a, just a little bit of a shake there, uh, Kevin. Oh, one of those... Uh, just a little bit of a shake. We'll get more info a little bit later. There was certainly a number around the Bay of Plenty. There was last night. Well, there's a big number, wasn't there? Yeah. But uh, it's New Zealand. It's moving and shaking all the time. And everything seems okay. So Tom Tara hanging in in this singles match, but needs to get a bowl real close to the jack because although Kelvin Scott played what he regard. As a loose bowl with his first, he certainly, one would, when we talk about consistency, won't do it with his second one. So here's Scott. Looks, oh, he's going to go by. He's left the gate open again. He'll be disappointed with that. So Tom Tara and Deering to stay in this match. Well, yes, it was a 4.5. It was? <laughs> yeah, so uh, New Zealand are getting hit quite a lot in the last 24 hours from the Bay of Plenty and uh, through to Christchurch, 142. However, different areas seem to actually oh. catch it a little bit more. So, Kelvin Scott. We didn't see any bowls actually move too far. No, we didn't, no. I'm going to make amends with this. We're still going to leave room for this shot to be drawn. How would that alter a few bowls? If it did actually move them slightly, do you, how do you work that out? Active nature as such. There you go. I've given, well, you, a, I've given you a question there. In the meantime, <laughs> it is it is normal that the players, as far as toucher here, oh, from the Timaru player or the South Canary player, it it is normal if balls get uh, moved around through a natural occurrence, i.e., wind, that the players endeavour to get to uh, mutual right. agreement. Yep to where the bowls were 
Now, can he win it on this one? He's going to have to do something special. Me. Trying for the last couple of ends. Trying, yes, oh, no. no. Oh. Just got the back <laughs> of the jack. And in fact, looked skyward. How did that's that happen, right. God? He thought he hit well. He got sort of got. I know it sounds a bit of a strange comment. But we've seen the jack as a, a, a circle, but he got the side of the jack, really, and uh, flicked it back to where the. I think it was the two Tom. T it was two. Yes, it was. Oh, coming back at you. To the uh, two Tom Tarawa balls. Well, funny you should say that. They, it starts to get to the point now when you've been holding the shots and all of a sudden you're not holding the shots and it just, just starts to nag away at you a wee bit. But, well, how long is this guy going to hang around for? You know, what's going to... All I've needed is one. Yeah, one, one. and it's uh, and full marks to the Tom Tara. He's, uh, he's hanging in there. Colin Scott in the water bottle. And you won't see him drink anything stronger than that. Coca-Cola is the strongest thing you'll see uh, Kelvin partake of, the painter. He uh, must be getting frustrated now. He's he's had this contest. I mean, had it about four times. Oh, exactly. Hit the 20s and his opponent was way down in the early teens. 13-8 now in that Piers match. That's uh, Nelson. Well, we were going to be getting to it, but at this rate, <laughs> it'll be finished soon. So on the backhand here is Golden Scott known he wants to endeavour to nail that jack to get the front touch up and he's heading down in that direction but won't get the weight. Just gonna pull up a wee bit short at green sweating. You can see that. You can see those foot marks there, Dave, around the jack area, etc. There's definitely you know, there's a bit of bit definitely sweating. I, I see the is it South Otago guys are putting their bowls well entrenched into their bag. That, ten, that would uh, make one think that they won't be required this afternoon by the look of it. <laughs> and here he comes again. He's at to Tom Taro. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to draw the front toucher. You've got to, you've got to outdraw me, Kelvin. Oh, Scott. Just... Oh. There, there you go. There's the... I was thinking he was going forehand and then the late switch. Yeah, just a, a, oh. and it's going to be too well. It's coming back now. I thought it was too wide for it. No, it's not. <laughs> Have a look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Just front toucher just caresses the jack. And now it sits Kelvin on 25. Oh, They've got, the, it, well, there's the view for Tom Tyro to play to. Very, very difficult shot. There you go. You heard it there. You can figure it. You've got, you've got an inch. Yeah. Even for a youngster, it doesn't work in uh, that measurement no, usually, no, but an no. inch is he can figure it from there. You know, it's pretty close. <laughs> yeah. So, Tom Toto and that, endeavouring to stay in and save the match. After he drew a very good shot, Kelvin Scott showing all of his class and experience, draws just uh, caresses, draws a front toucher, classes, cuts the vision off. I don't think you'll see Kelvin Scott go anywhere near the head. He'll be quite happy as long as he doesn't give a lean bowl for uh, Tom Taro to be able to use, to rub off, etc. Won't do that, playing the opposite hand to... Uh, Taro going wide, and of course, his his idea of doing that is if he was fortunate enough to get the jack, Kelvin Scott has got a bowl now sitting over that side of the head where we're at Tom Taro. Uh, is this the last bowl from uh, Tom Taro? Going on the charge, going for the front bowl on the charge and oh. goes by. Gee, that was close. And Kelvin Scott says that'll do. And there it is. A few Smi smiles all around. Yeah, smiles all around. Tom Taro is still a smile on his face. But Kelvin Scott really showing all of his class, running out the run winner for uh, his Nelson side by 25 shots to 17 over the New Zealand under 26 player, uh, Tom Taro of uh, South Canterbury. 
And we're going to take a little look at some of the highlights before we join the pairs in just a moment. And now joining in with the, uh, the pairs. There we go. Joining the pairs now. And we are into the 16th of 18. And we can see there, Kevin, is, uh, well, I guess uh, Nelson looking fairly reassured. Yeah, I'll put, no, they, correct, Dave. They just picked a three up, of course, on the, on the uh, previous end. Was it 13 8 to uh, Nelson? Just picked up a three. There's Gary Watson. Skip of the Nelson side, you know, the famous Watson name, son of the great Mari Watson, and uh, well, of course, was was a player in Canterbury and and, and Father Ken, legendary uh, performers, and Gary, of course, uh, part of that Nelson dynasty of players. Along with the Edwards, it's just a, they just keep flowing out of that <laughs> Nelson area. It's like bowls is in the blood. Yeah, it is. There's a, I, I, there's a, there's a park down there, Victory Park, I think it's called, was to be the, you know, Ron Snowden. I remember Ron Snowden telling me all about it, and that's where, in the good old days, where. The Edwardses and the Watsons and all these famous sporting Nelsonian families collect play to their various sporting achievements and uh, yeah, it's a it's a wonderful place to uh, to play sport and or participate in events in because they certainly look after your wealth in Nelson and as they do as well in the South Canterbury and Timaru of course, Sean O'Neill, Roger Glendini, a couple of players that have. Uh, you know, certainly put their name up in lights over the years as we watch O'Neill, the insurance advisor, working, what well, was working with, I think now retired, Barry Andrews, as we see O'Neill about to draw the shot. He will, sits right in behind the jack. There's Sean O'Neill, Murray Scott, saying that urging Gary Watson on. 
played out on the forehand to that shot bowl. Needs to get through the port to get to the counting area. It's going to be a bowl outside it. 16-9 at Nelson lead. Murray Scott, of course, been part of the Nelson representative side for many, many years. And a holder of numerous uh, Nelson titles. Now, where is the jack there? The jack is right behind the Sean O'Neill bowl. There, there we go. There's, there's the view. Thank you very much there. Great camera work. Thank you, Team Tamara. They uh, got the right on top of the camera. So Watson and endeavouring to play through to get to, through this port to get down to the jack. He's on a pretty good line. How long is it gonna, going to hold up for? No, it's not going to get the port. Need to get the port clean to get to the shot bowl. Leading, of course, is 16-9. As we played in 17, Roger Glendinning giving some instructions on to uh, Sean O'Neill, the uh, South Canterbury skip. Quite a few instructions coming through, actually. Roger's very good at giving instructions. He's uh, oh, very good. He played a lot with a chap called one New Zealand Fours, playing with a chap named Peter Meyer. Peter Meyer from, I think it was the uh, New Brighton Club. And, uh, yeah, very good. And uh, Graham Stanley, another... Uh, Another famous name that used to be part of the Canterbury scene. But Roger Glenn Denning was a very, very... He was a, a lead, but a very good one at that. And Watson now trying to get through that port. Leading, of course, 16-9 with one hand to play. After this, is looked narrow out of the hand. Uh, it's not, though. You can see Murray Scott trying to... Urge it on. Urge it on. Won't do so. Okay, so who's it got what? It is shot. Oh, I was about to say, who's got what? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it might have been Shake Einstein because... Can they come back? No, they can't. And, and, and it appear, I suppose from Nelson's point of view... It would appear with them winning this match here now. They're most likely through to the quarterfinals. But who knows? Uh, now, we don't know all the results. Obviously, we don't. And, uh, you know, differential could make a difference of well, finishing to one or two. Well. So, uh, it's only one more end. So, play it out, chaps, and just, uh, uh, and, uh, and just see what happens. Gary Watson having a good, good talk to uh, Sean O'Neill over the situation. Here is... Uh, here's one of the weird deliveries around the... <laughs> you enjoy calling it Well, that. it's the old Phil Scoglin uh, delivery uh, around the back. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they cur So uh, Murray Scott uh, curls it all the way uh, all the way around the back. There used to be another chap as well, chap of Vaughan, uh, Pete Vaughan out of... Uh, uh, the Wellington, men were two, and then Wellington, and they really, I, I, they must have a sore back and shoulder by the end of the day because they certainly, you watch watch closely now with Murray Scott where his arm goes. That, that uh, he'll take the arm all the way back, give it a bit full back twirl oh. in the behind there. <laughs> that is like a patonk. Absolutely, Almost. you would it's expect a, him to throw it like patonk. Wouldn't go down yeah. very well with the greenkeeper, but uh, it is almost patonk. Well, Peter Peter Vaughan, the guy I was talking about, his used to, when he went back like that, he used to go climb it all the way up his back and then come down and deliver. Uh, Murray doesn't go all the way back up. It's like but ten pin bowling. It, yeah, he sort of curls it around. But you know, he, he he's had that delivery for forever. It does the same thing every bowl. But it's the release more than what you do prior to the release. Is that right? Yeah, I, you know, being a, th a theorist about this, I, my question about it is that, and I'll just highlight it in but a moment, is that when he comes in there right yeah. now, you'll see the hand move around. That, to me, is the what I would call the, the, 
yeah, the, the fragile part of the delivery, really, because you know the, the hands not uh, the hands not in, a, in one position, it's not facing, and it's there's plenty of room for it to wobble all over the place. It's almost superfluous movement, but you don't need. No, you don't. No, 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 no. You don't need it. Yet you're getting your muscles trained into that. Well, I just think you're introducing. I mean, I ha look, this guy's won heaps and heaps and heaps of Nelson titles, and I, so I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's the wrong thing or the right thing, but I just think that if you, and I'm purely talking from a coaching point of view, that you, to get the best out of it, you minimise of the error of getting to the point of delivery. And uh, you know, if there's too much moving around, you can c increase the. <laughs> it's, it's awkward, isn't it? <laughs> well, we're just trying the movement here in our little booth, and I'll tell you that, no, the shoulder doesn't like it. No, no, no. But all, oh, oh, you know, well, well no, done there. Too. Well, I can say right now, none of them like the jacket. <laughs> no, <laughs> exactly. Well, they're like uh, in a line across in front of the jack. Well, they'll be shaking hands at the end of this game. Sean O'Neill, I imagine, will draw the shot here. Yes, he will. It'll come down to the centre line, finish right in front. That's the shot for sure. And Gary Watson, he'll give it a, He'll follow that ball down. Yes, the lefty. He'll follow. So that ball's got a different arc on it on the way through. It's a good line, but is it going to timber into the front? Yes, it will. Won't get through cleanly. Just makes it harder because that rolled that ball across. Sean O'Neill. He's got the shot at the moment on the green speckled bowl. Needs to get through this port clean and run a metre to get to two and will be close to, I would say. Watson here. He's certainly tightened that line up. And that's going to get one of the front balls. And uh, no effect. Seventy nine. 9 after completion of 17. That's 79 to Nelson. Shaking hands, and it is. It, it, this ball comes to rest, but it is <laughs> at least a couple. Well, well played, Sean, because three. I'm picking that made uh, three of it. Perhaps. Well, no one's going to tell us. So. <laughs> no, there we, go. we know that Nelson won that. But we know definitely that Nelson won. So that, we know that, that Nelson as well now have, of course, won the rubber because they won the singles prior to that. So they're in a good position to go through into the quarterfinals, of which... Oh, the breeze has got up a little bit now. It has got up. And, and of course, Dave, we now wait, don't we, to see who those quarterfinals are. And we know that probably around about uh, 3 o'clock, maybe 3.30, we'll let you know in just a minute. We're about to have just a few highlights of the pairs.
And welcome back to the Bowls New Zealand coverage of the National Intercentre. It is broadcasting live. Uh, welcome back again. Yeah, that's it. Welcome back to the Bowls New Zealand coverage of the National Intercentres. We're broadcasting live from the Burnside Bowling Club. I'm Dave Worsley and joined now by Kevin Hitman. And Kevin, we've come to the quarterfinal stages and there it is for the women's quarterfinals. Take us through who will be playing who. Well, I think the highlight straight away really, uh, Dave, is to see the Tennis Valley side that have made their way through it in the women's playoff. Fantastic effort from one of our smaller centres. They'll go up against Bayer Plenty, who were very strong yesterday. Big match, though, the next one. Wellington v Nelson. I would say they are the top two seeds in the women's, and they will play one another uh, in the quarterfinals. A local derby, really, with the Auckland side up against Counties Manukau and at North Harbour versus Whanganui in the last of the quarterfinals of the women. So we'll be concentrating on the men's singles. And in the men's draw, we have got Northland up against Nelson, Wellington versus well, Taranaki. Have a look, that men's draw about to come up. Oh, there it comes. It is. We've got that blue sky, though. Uh, Fantastic. Magnificent. Just looking, wait for that uh, men's draw. Looking fantastic there. The uh, the whole complex here at Burnside. Multicolours, Mike Small, our marker again. And the uh, that draw will come up shortly for the for the men's. But I can tell you that we will be our feature match. There it is. Northland v Nelson and Taranaki v Wellington as our televised match. Central Otago versus Whanganui and Southland v Auckland. Now, of course, the Wellington Taranaki game will see the singles clash, clash which we'll cover, which will feature Raymond Martin, the about to make his uh, Blackjacks debut in 10 days' time in Australia, and Dean Alger, the well performed, of course, uh, Taranaki player who has uh, been a winner of the New Zealand singles and New Zealand force before. So, Dave, we've got all class out there this afternoon. Well, you've got your wish in many ways. You had picked that Wellington would be one of the better performing centres. And, of course, Taranaki, you did mention, actually, in the previous match, that don't count Taranaki out because they are solid throughout, even if they don't solid have the stars. Solid throughout. Remember, they have won the Indescendia on seven occasions. Seven. Seven. That must be one of the highest. Uh, well, Dunedin's actually the highest really? uh, with uh, 13. Uh, and Canterbury in 12. And the next cab off the rank is Taranaki with uh, seven. Above Auckland, uh, they must love that. They, well, yes, correct. Auckland have only won it on five occasions. And uh, Taranaki won it, the last time they won it was in 2015. And in 2018, Wellington have won it twice. They won it in 2018. Interesting, though, at that bottom end of the draw, uh, Southland v Auckland, because in the 2021 uh, Intercentre Finals, uh, played in, uh, in Wellington. It was uh, Southland who ran out the winners, and our last winner in 2022 uh, was that of, of Auckland, and they go head to head against one another in the uh, a quarter final right at the bottom of the draw. Uh, you see our marker there, Mike Small, yeah. uh, who uh, is uh, you, he's uh, mic'd up, so you'll be able to hear what he has to, to say throughout the match. And we're I'd just waiting for the official buzzer, but that's not a problem. We've got uh, everybody ready. And, of course, our T-shirt competition, which we have... No competition. <laughs> ...we've designed, and it is uh, Taranaki. Certainly with the, the mountain there, we've got all sorts of things. The Hawara Water Tower. Uh, North Harbour, though, with their Harbour Bridge. That was, uh, that was a nice one. And a few well, other... Of course, well, of course. Well, they've made their way through in the woman, haven't they, uh, uh, North, North Harbour? I just, I think we'll just wait and see what happens. But you know, we'll just make a check on the Wellington side because the the, uh, the notes I was given earlier on, it didn't feature uh, Caleb Hope. But I just saw him there uh, on the rink with a bowling rag. And well, he's in the fours now, and what we've got uh, change to the Wellington line. Uh, there's a change to the Wellington. I, I just wondered whether there was a change to that Wellington fours side. It is uh, Ray Martin, of course, in the singles in the pairs. Steve Ditford and Andrew Kelly. And then in the fours, we have Robbie Bird, Caleb Hope, and we've got Finbar and Blake Signal. 
Well, that's a surprise because Seamus Curtin has now been uh, relegated, one could say, to the reserve bench. And, and what, uh, what would be the reason there? What's the reasoning for shuffling things at the oh, last moment? Look, I think it's about consistency. And, uh, you know, that, uh, uh, even though we watched that game yesterday, that, uh, you know, remember we saw that combination get quite comprehensively beaten yesterday, the Andrew kelly Pierce combination. And uh, both, both of them struggled, certainly, but there's that breezes up. But, you know, uh, Caleb Hope's a big man for the big occasion. And... Finbar McGuigan, one of the informed players. So, yeah. Um, well, it's nice when you've got that quality. Well, yeah, you can just that you can, someone. That you can choose from. And the Taranaki side, we've got oh. Dean Elgin playing the singles. Craig DeFaria uh, and the evergreen Morris Symes making a comeback for Taranaki. Because when Taranaki in those winning sides, uh, if I go back to the early years when they last in, in the like in 1998, around those areas, 1990, Morris Symes would have been in that winning Taranaki. He probably would have been to, playing the singles then. Uh, more, than, more than likely, may well have, or playing the pairs with Jeff Hawker. But, so making his comeback now at the Taranaki side, and the very well-performed uh, forward side uh, with Adam Collins, Aidan Zitterstein. Remember Zitterstein winning a bronze medal at the uh, Commonwealth Games in uh, so uh, for Gold Cook Coast. Uh, the... Uh, no way. No. Okay, there you go. Well, tell me, um, these particular competitors in the Taranaki team, which club are they from? We always like to represent the club. So, Dean Elgar is from the West End Club. Craig DeFaria is from the West End Club. Morris Symes is from Fitzroy. Uh, Adam Collins, I'm not 100% sure where he's from. Uh, Aidan Zitterstein is from uh, Paratutu. Steve Walker is from West End. Hamish Carpey is uh, from Paratutu. But really... I know very well that the people in Okato, um, they'll be, which were his mother plays as well out at Okato, Macaldowney country, um, the Okato boys, they'll be claiming that's where Hamish started off his bowls right. and is still a member, in fact, of the uh, Okato uh, Club. Well, what about uh, some of the uh, Wellington players? You can name well, a couple well, of clubs Well, yeah, the, the Wellington side, so Raymond Martin, of course, plays uh, out, out of Victoria. Andrew Kelly really plays out of... Uh, Canterbury, but he's here. Stephen Ditford is at, at Victoria. Robbie Bird is at Nine Eye. Finbar McGuigan at Stokes Valley. Um, Blake uh, Blake Signal also at Stokes Valley, and the other player, of course, is another uh, the Stokes Valley play, uh, Caleb Hope as well uh, plays out of uh, uh, Stokes Valley. And remember, Blake Signal just recently back from Australia, and uh, just taken a full-time role. Uh, as the management of Bowles Wellington. So, very good side. Now, I'm getting a little bit of a statement coming through here. And uh, Ray Martin apparently has said that, uh, Kevin, you haven't mentioned Tukupa. <laughs> now, I, I'm not familiar with this. Perhaps you might want to fill us in. Uh, okay, yes, okay. So, um, so the West End Bowling Club in New Plymouth is directly across the road uh, from uh, Sanders Park, which is the home of the great Tukupa Rugby Club. Okay. And uh, there's always been a, a lot th of Taranaki uh, in jokes going on. Well, right there. <laughs> and of course, Raymond Martin grew up in Taranaki and he grew up uh, right alongside the Tukupa Rugby Club. And there's always been this rivalry between West End and Paratutu because the rugby players from one club uh, traditionally go to uh, two cop and others go to West End. And in fact, they have a, they have a competition every year, a rugby competition still on the, on the bowling green. So, yeah, so yeah, yeah, two cop and Raymond, um, the Taranaki champions, of course, the playing through Taranaki rugby champions. <laughs> so, yeah, very special place for me, as you well know, Raymond. All right, let's have a look now. And the blue bowls of our Wellington friend, and that is Ray Martin. That's uh, the bluish. Dean Elgar's got a fantastic record uh, in singles, uh, being well, he's a joint member of both West End and Paratutu, but has got an amazing record uh, for the, in fact, just in fact, last weekend, uh, defeated uh, Darren Gooden, who hasn't made the final cut of the Taranaki side. Dean Elgar defeated uh, Darren Gooden. I think it was 25-24 in the final of the Taranaki singles. As we see the second bowl, Raymond Martins, and it's right in front of that. Uh, Dean Elgar's finished right in front of the Jack Martin with those blue bowls. And of 
course, about to debut for the Back Jacks the week after next on the Gold Coast at the Maldi Nations on the backhand. Now, it is a little bit deceiving. At one stage, there looks as though we had three different bowls coming down. However, we are in the middle. We are in the middle. And Raymond Martin tracking well towards the Jack. Just now, if you remember, in the game we covered the other day with uh, Raymond Martin, he... Uh, he he took a few ends to sort of get going, as I would call it. But by goodness, once he got going, he put on an absolutely outstanding display. And uh, this boy's got a big future, I, I feel, uh, in the New Zealand bowls. Seeing as Alga now draws another Mike Small very quickly, putting the lollipops up. So it's two to Dean Alga, the lovely green umbrellas behind us there. So obviously the sun is shining down yep. there. Uh, uh, in Canterbury. Now, I believe that uh, Darren wasn't available uh, this particular week. Is that uh, making sense? We're getting all sorts of messages coming Oh, out, the Taranaki messages. Okay, so Darren, of course, the manager of the Taranaki Raceways. We see just oh. not quite past the bowl. So still holding a two. That is a Taranaki. So Dean Elgar, is he going to look at changing his hand or... Asking Mike Small how far in front that blue bowl is. There's the indication, very clear indication by Mike Small. Just about a metre lower than Jack Elgar on the backhand. Certainly got the bowl out. Endeavoured to get it out on that wide, safer side. Has he got it out far enough? It's cutting back towards the centre line now. Won't have the weight to do any damage. Yeah, I'm sure now Raymond Martin will endeavour to follow that uh, that line, that backhand line, beat his own bowl bust by a foot 18 inches and give him shot. Definitely two, as indicated by uh, Mike Small, holding shot on the backhand is Raymond Martin out of the Victoria Club uh, in Wellington. Remembering, of course, Wellington, surprise, surprise, have only won the inter-centre on two occasions, the last and... 2018. Now, an interesting point here, just quickly, Dave, I'm just going to see now. You'll see he went out wider there now. It just appears to me, watching that bowl of Raymond Martin, that if we get out a wee bit wider on that track out there, you're definitely going to have, a, have to have a different weight because that bowl struggled all the way uh, to try and get back to the centre line. So there's obviously a definitive line down there to uh, to get that line right. So two shots to the Taranaki player, to Dean Elga. So you'd say that at the moment the bowlers are playing from which end, would you call that? Well, they're now playing from the, literally from the, the Avonhead uh, end of the, the, the clubhouse down towards the Burnside Reserve, down towards the park end or car park end, but down towards Burnside uh, Park is Elga resplendent in the amber and black on the backhand. Three-quarter length head. Yeah, we're just waiting for those. Uh, so the two should be... Well, you haven't had the score put up just yet, but it is a two. It was two, two definitely Taranaki. indicated by Mike Small for sure. Martin going to his forehand. And you'll see in the top corner there, that pairs match between Craig DeFaria with Morris Symes up against the, the Wellington combination of Andrew Kelly skipping with Stephen Ditfit. Now Steve Bell did mention uh, during a comedy comedy, <laughs> comedy it could have been commentary stint that uh, being in a team, in a force team with Morris Symes you did what he said I can tell you firsthand, I played with, uh, in the Taranaki days, I played uh, uh, number two for Morris on uh, our side for a number of years with the late Jim Christie skipping and Jeff Hawken, who now lives in Australia, leading. And uh, Jim was a nice guy, our skip, but Morris was the boss. <laughs> yeah. uh, and you, uh, you certainly knew if you didn't play well. <laughs> Now he said that if Morris said, this is where I want you to put it, that's where you, you didn't go the other way and say, but I wanted to go this way. No, there was, was only, there was one rule. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Jeff Hawke and, and, and Morris, uh, years later, we on a one, of course, they won the national peers together. Here's Elga on the backhand, holding shot, 
Nah, I'm just looking at that width again that we spoke about before. That, you see how it's, it's just... Well, it's testing. It, 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 it's coming back, but it's coming back right at the back end. It's not arcing. That's really holding a straight line there for a while before it moves back to the centre line. Now, the players will work that out quickly. And then and there's a wind there as well. You just saw Raymond Martin, saw his shirt really getting buffeted around. This looks a better line through the port to the jack. And that's what the Wellington player will do and finish jack level. Not quite touch the jack. Not many shot options on here for D Dean Elgar. He, he certainly, he's not frightened to attack as uh, Dean Elgar, but they're yeah, looking up, just looking to see that wind direction. Elgar. On his backhand. Won numerous Taranaki titles. Like, uh, comes like I say up from numerous. the starts very quickly. He, he's goes down and then comes up quite yeah, quickly. Yeah, he, he does. He's uh, uh, he had good weight to it. Oh. Good weight, just to bowl wide. That was all set well. F fell in, but indicating very quickly was uh, Mike Small that uh, it was one, the red lollipop you saw go up. So it was one shot to Raymond Martin. Remember and the changeover. That this is the quarterfinals. We're up to 25 in the singles and, of course, 18 ends in the pairs. There's the quarterfinals, the first of the quarterfinals here. And going to just feather on the outside as that bowl finishes. Jack Leveled as Raven Martin will be the one. And it is, you see there, Mike Small. And you'll see quite a crowd starting to assemble yeah, around the rinks now. Of course, a number of the sides now are now the in the centre for them has come to a completion. They are... Uh, haven't made that through the post section play and really I haven't seen all the women's draw yet but as far as the men are concerned uh, Dave it sort of went pretty much to plan well that's what I was about to ask you if you look down the draw forgetting about this one that we're watching at the moment who would you pick on paper who would you pick from the top to the bottom well if I look at the top four the top part of the draw you've got Nelson Wellington Taranaki uh, all bunched in. in but you've in got together. Northland up there. And you know, the Northland sits at the top. Nelson are playing Northland right now. Wellington v Taranaki. Now, Central Otago have been the surprise packet, right? Highlights, they play down there on good greens all the time, Central Otago. They play consistent. They draw well. And this is the sort of event where if you've got a good draw inside, you can, you can come through. And Central Otago... I haven't got the numbers in front of me, but really, Central Otago never really looked in, uh, under, under threat that they were not going to qualify. So they're a formidable side. Great to see the great Peter Ballas' province, Whanganui, the Whanganui side, make their way through. Literally a new side. Really, there's you know, no Ballas, no slight, no, no Ray Park. Are they local players? Yes, yes, they are. Young Karen Hulia, who will be part of the New Zealand Maori side. He's in that side. Uh, so, you know, Whanganui, I'd say, literally a new side in amongst the, 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 the big eight. And Southland and Auckland at the bottom of the draw, um, although Auckland had to struggle through in that last round to make sure that they were there for the quarterfinals. Um, and, of course, as I said before, uh, Southland the winner in 2021 and Auckland the winner in 2022 of the Indecenters. So they deserve their spot to be there. So perhaps the likes of the Waikato's, Manawatu's, um, I'd be a wee bit disappointed, but there's only uh, there's only eight that can make yeah, it. You can't fit them all in. You can't fit them all in. And it is Raymond Martin holding the shot here. A bit of a scattered head at this point. Straight line head. Martin will try and put the, on that forehand side. Try and draw to that jack level position. Looks narrow out of the hand, and it is narrow out of the hand. And I'm not too concerned about some looseness with Raymond Martin because, as we know, we watched him play the other day and it certainly took him a few uh, ends to get into his work. And you're right, uh, Dave, that, that uh, Dean Elgar's delivery is uh, somewhat different to what you would see from so many <laughs> other players. Well, he just, he just comes up very quickly. He does. In most sports, you'd stay, stay and come up gradually rather than... A, a, I wouldn't call it a sudden, rather than quick. Now, I can't give you a quick update on the fours. So a five at the first end for Wellington and the fours, which 
is a great start. Oh, a five. absolutely. Gee. Well, because the, the problem comes about now when you're playing this format, you've got three sides there. You know you've got to win two out of three. And you do scoreboard hunt. You do scoreboard look. There's no doubt about that. So, you know, the guys playing the pairs next to God, goodness, we've got the five, you know, on the on the first end, the Taranaki. Well, you, don't, you probably don't want to tell them, do you? Not at well, this early stage. Alan Batley, the manager of the Taranaki side, and no doubt Mike Carroll and, and Rod Leach, the manager of the Wellington side, they'll be keeping running going. They'll be knowing, you know. Yeah, what, what, all right for them to know, but not the players. Yeah. Not at, yet. at the end of the day, this part of it, the thing that differential doesn't matter. You know, you just got to win two, two, two matches. That's the that's the big yeah, thing. Al going out, out, one down on the head, tightened us up considerably. And needs to get his own front bowl to have any joy here. He's going to get the Raymond Martin bowl and make two of it. Ran oh. straight in it. It was undergreened all the way. And early stages, of course, but that takes Wellington to a 3 2 lead. 3 2 to the uh, to Raymond Martin. 2 to Wellington. You hear there for confirming that from uh, Mike Small. Of course, don't forget to uh, go to the Bowls New Zealand website and all of the uh, all of the results uh, and to see who's qualified, etc., are all there uh, on the Bowls New Zealand website, right up to date. And you'll see uh, how your your province is uh, is feared in the qualifying uh, part of the tournament. And uh, Kevin, tomorrow it is uh, semis and finals, and you'll be back again. I believe Alex Reed is back in the hot seat correct tomorrow and I, you may even be a little bit earlier we'll have to recheck on the exact start times i think the we're 8 30 tee off i think it is goodness <laughs> i think so i'll be a beach volleyball at that time <laughs> calling beach volleyball at that time at the mount so uh, <laughs> you'll be here and ready and oh nice little kiss i heard um, lavina Lavina good, good yes. this morning talking I'll, about the the, uh, the volleyball i'll be with her uh we're just uh, working on who's doing which games i think she's doing the women's i'm doing the men's or vice versa we'll figure it out uh, she was talking this morning on news talk zb about the uh the volleyball so okay. elga uh, still trying to find their way both of these very very uh, the, these two guys are very two very good singles players so yeah. just to point out which bowls are which the i'll call them the lighter blue are uh, ray martin the darker one which can look almost black and some some light there the the darker one which is to what one o'clock maybe two o'clock yes that is uh, dean algo the darker of the two raymond martin's are the two copper blue color the cucumber <laughs> oh, you're, you're, you're going to talk about the cucumbers again aren't you yes <laughs> so yeah i know dean algo he very he's very hard on himself dean he's a uh, perfectionist really and he'll be trying to get some consistency into his play because right now uh, oh, it's it's, well, consistent. to be fair, um, uh, Dave, for no reason for both of these players. They're both struggling to get that line. Is it this end or is it just, what, third well, end? Well, uh, I'll say, the, 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 look, the score is actually nil all 3-2. doesn't mean a lot. But you can see how Raymond Martin is struggling to find his line yet again. See it moving away now under that centre line. You want to be coming in towards the jack, not running away from the jack. So I just I wonder how long Dean Elgar might persevere on this hand and go back to find some generosity on the draw on the other hand. Oh, he's coming down well here though towards this. Is, this will give him some confidence. Still going to be short, but would most likely, and it is two shots, you saw the lollipops come out there. Very quickly from uh, Mike Small. Plenty of room here, though, for Raymond Martin uh, on the forehand. And he just knows he's got to get a bit more width in his delivery. And yes, he has, but is it enough? Yes, he looks as though he's got that. Still going to be narrow, but or more than likely with weight, hold up long enough and will do. That takes it away. And uh, it is indicated quickly there from uh, Mike Small that that last bowl that uh, Raymond Martin delivered is in fact shot. Wellington leading 1-0 in the uh, pairs as they play the second of 18 ends. So Dean Elgar here, he'll be definite. 
Doesn't want to draw the shot. He knows where his line is now. He just needs to improve that by a metre. So here's Elga on his backhand. Looks to be on a good line again. He gets under his own front bowl. He'll draw the shot. He gets under it clean. He'll draw the shot. Needs to fall in, not fall out. Doesn't do so. Head goes in the air. Disappointed. Body language tells you very quickly. <laughs> How long do you have to wait for the ball to fall either way? Well, it, it, whilst the head's in progress, it doesn't matter. It can fall at any time. Right? Now, when it comes to the completion of the end, my thoughts, or my, well, my interpretation always has been is that, not that it happens very often, it's just it's bad luck. You know, but, right. but is there a time, I'm not sure whether it's actually a time defined in, in the rules. Um, a lot comes down to gentlemen's agreement, really, that that's, uh, yeah. Well, you never know with uh, some of the shaky ground that we've had. Of course, we did have a well, little one bit today. of a quake, well, 4.5. Yeah, one today. 3-0, though, to Wellington early in that four, uh, Piers game, 3 of 18. Now, you'll see straight away now, Raymond Martin is trying to find that, both players have been trying to find that they're testing arc. It, yeah, they? they're trying to find that arc to the jack, and we've seen Martin now get his weight right. And it's interesting that Elga is really going to play up and down. It would say he's going to. I think his, his viewpoint is I'm going to play the same both ways, just backhand, forehand, and there he is going to draw a oh, front toucher. That'll give him the confidence that he's been searching for. It's as if they've been probing each side. I'll try this side. You're going to try that side. Which one's going to come off best? Well, Raymond Martin quickly it. now going to the backhand. I, now, I, I'm of the opinion that, that uh, Elga is on the best drawing hand. And just, just we're looking at the arc of the bowl, and you'll see again he was... Now, look at that natural arc, oh. Dave, as it comes in towards the head. It's just got a more... What I would say, it's like I was waiting for that. You could just see it teetering there, dropped in. So that would be then but the blue ball is the Raymond Martin ball will be shot. It's a, it's a more user friendly, I think, draw to the centre line. Trying hard here as well though. Is Dean Elga gets inside the port, gets the inside, will get the oh. jack, and does so falls in. Has it changed? Uh, it I has. think that would think. be one two. I think that'll be one to Dean Elga, one to Taranaki. Asking the question is Raymond Martin, and yes, yes. it is. Oh, gee. That's close. Having the three of them just bunched around it now, just about kissing the jack. Yeah. Here we go with Ray Martin. Uh, Raymond Martin won't mind if he's got a yard of extra weight and literally plays through the two bowls. He's out on that wider side, going to go by, but he won't be too concerned, especially if he's over the head. Because it puts Dean Elga in a very, it's a it's an awkward position to play to now. Just if you were Elga, would you try and go behind? I'd be going behind now. I'd take you know, I'd, my viewpoint is, um, I've got the shot. Mark has confirmed I've got the shot. You play the shot now, Raymond. To uh, uh, I don't want to risk what I've got. got. A bit of a race coming down here. Oh no, they're split apart now. So Elga will be more than happy with this if he gets past the blue bowl and does, just, just gets by. Another bowl on the head, so Raymond Martin will just be endeavouring to... Wouldn't they play with the same weight as he did with his, th his last bowl, but just bring that line in. It doesn't, of course, want to push his bowl out of the head with extra weight because he'd be, uh, he'd be giving more shots to the Taranaki player and I'm sure we'll just see him trying to reach up to the bowl, get a tip in towards the jack off the inside of the bowl. Would bowlers of this quality have a weaker or stronger hand? Uh, Was it fairly even? Fairly, fairly even, really. And that's exactly what Raymond Martin's endeavouring to play, what we just spoke about. And he's in the target area, get that double clunk and we'll do so. That's just what we... That's the shot that we spoke about that was on for him to 
sit on to those two bowls. Dean Elgar will come and have a look. Now he's got the situation. Switches around now, doesn't Well, he? there's not a lot he can play to, to be fair, because the Dean Elgar bowl is behind the head. Yes, it is behind the head, but just behind the head. One would think with weight, jack movement is more likely to move back to where those two deeper bowls of Raymond Martins are. And it's really, it's what the angle looks like to get to it for two. Look at the view from where he'll be bowling. Yeah. This is what he's going to see. There's not a lot to see. <laughs> no, there's not. Uh, it's fairly difficult. He either concedes that one, and it's just going to be a one, isn't it? Well, or when I say concede, I, he either uh, realises. I'm of the opinion where he can't try with too much weight because it could go against him. So just, and even now, he's not 100% sure he's looking at the next rink, but I don't think Elga's 100% sure. He's, no, he sees no, he, he doesn't. He's, he's unsure. Which, he's not which 100% way. sure of which hand that he's going to try to play with and with what weight on that backhand trying to reach, trying to reach through the bowls. Turn one of the fronts over. Well, he's trying hard. By goodness, he's trying hard. Watching it closely. Well, that was a valiant attempt trying to turn the two balls into the head. One. And it'd be one to Raymond Martin. It is. Jumps to 5 2. Well, that that score changed about three, possibly four times during the end. And I see that uh, in the pairs. Wellington have got the mat again, so they've jumped away to uh, a good start overall. I have the uh, Wellington side, very strong side. You know they would be, you know they would be the top seeds if, if it was a seeded event. Uh, the Wellington team would be, uh, yeah, they'd be the seeded side. Because also sitting in that top section of the draw here, yeah, there it is. It's in fact, uh, if I'm looking right, yeah, that's a, a good start for Wellington and the Pears. Raymond Martin now just waiting till they finish on the head next door. On the forehand. And you can be assured. Dean Elgar, a real fighter, as is Raymond Martin. Just going to fall short now. Yeah, now, I think what we spoke about before, um, Dave, is that, that uh, Elgar's found his hand now. I don't think you're seeing chop and change around either way a lot. I think he's pretty content down the, using that backhand draw there. And that'll be the shot. That'll finish Jack Level. Oh, half a bowl, Jack Lowe, on the onto the uh, forehand goes Raymond Martin, and you'll see there now four ends gone in that Piers, and it is uh, Wellington who are leading by seven nil. Interesting in that Piers though, um, uh, although early days, Dave, that they made that pair because Seamus Curtin, remember, was leading, and we did the game yesterday with Seamus Curtin and Andrew Curtin, uh, with uh, uh, Andrew Kelly, they got quite comprehensively beaten. Stephen Ditford's gone to lead now, and they're leading in this quarter final. they're leading Taranaki 7-0, so perhaps a good tactical change by the uh, Wellington selectors. Well, I do have a uh, update, 5-2 uh, yes, after uh, three in the fours. Now, I'm assuming, well, of course, it has to be Wellington because they won the uh, the first end by five, so yeah. five two up after three. I don't know if that's really going to surprise you too much um, after winning the uh, first five. And uh, let's just have a look. So in the pairs we've got seven zip, and of course we have a five two. That should be five two, shouldn't it? Correct. And in the singles. Uh, here's the chance now. Three balls played by Raymond Martin. Dean Elgar holding shot. Here's the chance for him to, what I would say, build it head in his favour. Needs to get past his own bowl, his front bowl, going to do so. And gets down towards his head. That'll count. Gets past his own shot bowl. 
now. So what does Raymond Martin do here? I wouldn't be the slightest surprised to see Ra Raymond Martin attack down through there, knowing though that still leaves Dean Elga a metre to, to draw the shot. But really, Raymond's had three ineffective bowls to date on this head, so he might uh, he might say, well, I've got to get something on the head. Uh, looking at his body, though, I think he's going to, yes, he is. Going to the backhand with weight. That's uh, what we thought about trying to get to, well... That's luck. <laughs> there you go. It is luck. And, Indeed. Uh, you know, it was a bowl, bowl off target. He knew that. And, uh, you know, Raymond acknowledged, hey, that was, uh, was a bit fortuitous there to get that, that result. So Elga now having to come back down around those short bowls and draw the shot. It was when you, the driver's on, anything can... Anything can happen. 5-2 it is. Raymond Martin of Wellington leading D. Nelga of Taranaki on the backhand is the well-performed Taranaki skip. He's certainly on a different line. Needs to get to Jack Level or give him shot. I think will do so. Needs to stop now. It will. And finishes Jack Level. And I'm, from my viewpoint, at his shot as indicated by... Mike Small, I think he a, a, a sigh of relief there, Dean, because he knew he was. Uh, well, he was in trouble, wasn't he? Uh, he was, and he, and he knew he knew he was on the narrower line as well. And of course, running in conjunction with these uh, men's quarterfinals on the other green, is of course is the is the drive of Raymond Martin's getting feather feather roll, but. You could say yes, there was luck, but he's only really one bowl off target. He wasn't. Uh, he wasn't a long way off target. He's literally one bowl off target, and of course, running in conjunction on the front green here at Burnside, at the same stage of the event is the quarter final of the uh, the women's uh, intercentre as well, and they they uh, are playing in the same format and everything else as as uh, the men. Kevin, just looking at a little bit of the history of uh, the intercenters in the men's, when did that first start, and who were the first couple of years who won that? 1970 in Christchurch, they won it in 71 um, and then Auckland won it in 72, and then Dunedin went on in 73, 74, 75. Uh, they <laughs> who, won it. Who would have better been? Uh, the Dunedin side at that side at the time would have more than likely been uh, the McConnells. Uh, that have been a Scott, the great Kevin Darling, um, Gordon Jolly. So it was pretty consistent top performers. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It was all good. Dunedin, you know, they have won the Indescender uh, on 13 occasions. Yeah. So they, you know, they they sit on the top of the roster for uh, uh, victories in the Indescender. They, they they sit at 13 and in the, and, and, and the women. Uh, it's Waikato who sit on the, the top um, with seven, and that came about through that great era in the in the seventies and the eighties um, with the great Millie Khan and the, those players, women, lady players, of which they had in the Waikato. They were very, very, uh, they were dominant, very dominant, and uh, followed by uh, uh, the uh, the Cantabrians uh, who have won six. But the ones that are coming quickly chasing all of them with uh, Nelson and that's because of Joe Edwards group of Bell players Smith, effectively Mari Watson, they've had a you know, Amy McElroy, Kirsten Edwards, they've had a real real influx of the best so to speak. So who won the women's in the first couple of years? When did, that started at a different time. Didn't yeah, 1983-84 Wellington, Wellington won it the first two years and uh, then Otago and then Taranaki, way back in 1987. I was they, waiting for a Taranaki. Yeah, they, 1987. <laughs> uh, they, uh, they won it. Don't ask me who was in the team. But, uh, uh, but they won it in 1987. Bit of a scattered hit here. Raymond Martin needs to get stopping, not going to touch on the jack. Well, I'm going to be two shots at this stage. Lane holding to Dean Elgar, the one sitting just 
parallel with the Jack asking the question. There's, uh, what, uh, there's two. Uh, there's two shots. So yeah, our eyes are pretty good to the here. And asking about the position and Mike Small just indicating really good market, just indicating that it's a bowl, uh, it's a bowl check low. So Elgert trying to get either just underneath or just around his front bowl there, which is going to be, he'll be disappointed with that because that's uh, it's a complete uh, in effect. And he's walked away, got his back turned on it. Uh, the only thing that that might do, just might get in the line, may just get in the vision line of Raymond Martin on that forehand side with Martin leading, or Wellington leading 5-3 over Dean Elgip of Taranaki, and he's got it out on a good a good arc, but is it going to hold enough now, gets past this, will be close and will do so, and there it is, the door will just just left the door open there at that last bowl of Dean Elgers. So he'd be disappointed as he was holding two shots. And that's where he really wanted to put the pressure on the draw for it. Raymond Martin didn't do so. Handing the mat over. It is one to uh, Raymond Martin, the Wellington player. How concerned would you be if you were Dean Elgar right now? But you're down by three. Dean Elgar would be trying to get it through his mind that I've got to get a head where I've got some, let's say, one metre consistency around the jack. You know, you know, that's really, you know, that's the key to singles. It's about getting that one metre consistency around the jack, not one six feet short, not one, uh, not one over there. Now, once you've got that, you can say, right, well, now I can control my length. I own the mat, I own the length. That's the whole... You know, and that's the key thing in singles that about effective bowls and owning the length and then owning it with your first bowl. That's the, it uh, makes such a big difference in singles. And look, singles is the sort of game where it, it's, it's, singles is just you. There's not a lot of luck goes with singles because, you know, with fours and pairs, there's a lot of bowls around the head and that to come off you. You know, you can very quickly find yourself in, in, in trouble in singles. You've got to play conservative. You've got to attack. You've got to manage the game. So it's a. Uh, it was always said in the old days. It was a. Uh, it was a special player that could uh, be be what I would call a, a sort of specialist singles. But our Dean Algarby can really, really disappointed with that. Jack's sitting on the two meter mark, and he's eight feet short. There's no wind. There's no sort of conditions to make it challenging. Now, I don't know, not that it should matter at this point, I don't know where Taranaki played this morning. And this sometimes can make a difference. You can come off a green that is a completely different pace green. But the difficulty that Dean Elga is finding now is trying to find, just trying to find some consistency. And that's where, uh, that's where he's struggling. Kevin, a matter of language here. It's been debated in various newsrooms that I've been involved in as to what a competition in bowls is between, say, Dean Elgar and Ray Martin. Is it a match, a game, or something else? Because in certain sports, like you don't say a basketball match, do you? It's a basketball yeah. game. Rugby can be match. Is it match more than a game? Uh, a sport like tennis is a tennis match. You play games within that match. This is a match. This is a match? Well, no, sorry. Well, this is the this thing. Is, this this is be... a, no, this is a game in a match. Because the match is Taranaki versus uh, Wellington, comprising of three games. That okay. makes the match. Yep, there you go. So you got the match. Because you know that if you were said that in a, in a bowls club, you said it's a game or a match, <laughs> that you would have a few people say, oh, it's just a game. So, oh, we, so someone will win the match either 2-1 or 3-0. And in doing so, they've either won two games, one game, or three games. There you go. Okay. So that because you know that some people, just colloquial language, would say, "Oh, we're going to go out and have a game." That's a game. You go. The fact when you've got the combinations of uh, no one. Now, that, both players will be disappointed right here because Raymond Martin's even asking, to, you, you, "Where I've got two seconds." 
because he was going to have a drive at that bowl for the shot. There's one bowl within four feet of the jack, and they'll be disappointed with that. And Martin needs to get past this front bowl here, which is he going to? He's going to do it again. Last bowl, just gets past it. Dean Elga, I wouldn't be surprised to see Dean actually attack that now because it's getting to the frustrating point where I can't get my draw right. I mean, to have a look. I already have a comment saying that you're right, Kevin. Not that I was wrong. I was just putting it out there. <laughs> now, singles and pairs, Taranaki were on Burnside 3. So they're familiar with conditions. Yeah, ab absolutely. This I, is earlier on. I just, Elga's having a look to see whether he's got two or one or two. And Jack in the ditch would do. You'd get rid of the shot box. Because right now, at 6-3, to say one person's playing better than the other is a guessing game, really, because they're both really um, to the class that these guys bring and the normal high standard. Um, they yet haven't got to that, which is somewhat surprising. This looks like Elga is, yes, going for the shot bowl. There's Dean Elga. He's close. Just got to hold a fraction. Got the jack into the ditch. they got three shots. There we go. That turned it around very nicely, didn't it? Yeah, uh, that's the fortuitous result that can go your way. Oh, he's only signaling one. Is really? Mike Small? Oh. I'm surprised in this. How did he come up with that? Way, yeah. The hard way to get one was the call. <laughs> oh, I see because of the angle there. The blue balls are out to the side. Yeah. But he'll Let's be. Take a look again. On the charge to the shot bowl of Jack. Hits the blue, drags it along with it. So he'd just be happy to uh, have scored. Now, again, so pretty happy to play down towards the two metre mark. 6 4 now it is Wellington leading. 7 4 now. Piers, 6 ends gone. Starting to tighten up a wee bit now. 7 4 as we play in 6 of 18. It's Morris Syme, skip side for Taranaki. Up against uh, Andrew Kelly. Good opening bowl here from Elga coming down towards the front of the under the jack. That's it, and it, it's interesting, Dave. That, that you can all of a sudden something happens, you get the shot, just sort of gives you that bit of zing in your feet, and uh, you, you get a couple of good bowls underway, and you just start again. Amy Martin. Trying to reach to the shot bowl. Looks as though he's going to be just under the head. And is. Dean Elga can safely come past that on the back end. He's got a good two metres to come past that on the back end. Draw down to the centre line to where the jack is. Main thing is that he holds that line, stays outside, and he's going to do so. Another good bowl here coming from Elga. Gets past the blue. We'll get down to the jack. And that's a well played and a front toucher as well. So the question now I'm going to ask Dave is at what point does Raymond Martin attack the head? Two down. Well, I think this could right be it. Now. <laughs> With that wind up, it should be. And... Down on his haunch is going to get his front bowl. Where, where's it going to? It can happen. Well, from two to one. Two to one. Helga won't be too concerned. He's got that front toucher there. Asking the marker, Mike Small, how far the Raymond Martin blue bowl is behind the jack, half a metre directly behind. On the backhand now is the Taranaki singles player, Dean Helga, of course, Dean's father who played out of the Vogeltown Club in New Plymouth. Uh, Ross Elga was a, was a top player in his own right, would have uh, passed away a number of years back, was a Taranaki Gold Star holder. So let's say that uh, Bowles is pretty the much uh, in the blood. But it's in the blood for sure, in the Elga blood. The Vogeltown Club, Dave, is one again. Talk about lovely clubs. Um, uh, the Vogeltown Club is literally located at the back of uh, Brooklyn's Pukekura Park and it's, so it's in a 
in a very native tree, lovely park environment. Uh, I couldn't believe how close the stadium is. You, you know, as in the little cricket stadium. Yes. And how you just walk, what, two blocks from Correct. the centre of town and you're like, there? Yeah, it's... Uh, that was just beautiful. Uh, maybe four years ago when I was around the, the town there in New Plymouth. And uh, that was uh, great. Well, this year we went down and did, uh, of course, cover the Taranaki Open Fours. And uh, I, um, Marlene and I had the pleasure of uh, taking Tamara on the last night after the, the finals had been played. Uh, and Brendan uh, Walton, who's a Polish New Zealand man, uh, took them to the Festival of Lights uh, up at Pukekura in Brooklyn's Park. Uh, what time the, of the year is that? That's the Christmas lights. That they And they always keep the lights going until the, the last day the Taranaki Open Fours. So all the visitors that come to New Plymouth or the Taranaki area can get up to the park and see the, you know, the famous festival of lights where they light the lakes up and do all sorts of things. And uh, so this year we took Tamara and uh, Brendan up they were to... Uh, to see the lights in that, where the cricket ground, you know, where the, the, the gates of cricket ground is, etc. I always feel I could do well at that cricket ground. It's not a big ground. No, ask Ross Taylor. He's got a lot of... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's got you're a... in danger when you're in the crowd. Well, it's... it's I, I, look, I don't know if it's changed, but it's, uh, it's rated as the second most picturesque cricket ground in the world. And the first? Uh, in South, I think it was in South Africa, I think. Um, but yeah, so, uh, Pukekura Park, lovely. So again on the charge is Raymond Martin, the Wellington singles player, on the backhand, trying to get to the front of the shot. Bob doesn't want to chip his own out. Does still only be one down. Well, it's only one, so you can concede it almost that I'm only one. I can oh, come absolutely, back. Yeah, absolutely, and and you know he'll be quite happy with that. Dean Ma and Dean Elgar will be very happy because he got two bowls. He forced Martin into the defensive attacking mode, couldn't One score, uh, but just just changed him around. So that gives uh, Dean Elgar that sort of feel good factor. Is there a uh, Conrad at Vogeltown? Uh, Conrad Yagush. That sounds about right because I've been told that Conrad is the one of the mainstays of the club. Very active with the Yagush name. Uh, well, it was... Um, so, there was uh, Dr. Tom, uh, who delivered many of the children of New Plymouth. In fact, you're looking at one right now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Dr. Tom played bowls up at West End, where Dean Elgar uh, is, is a, a, a player. And uh, then there was a son, uh, Chris, who played halfback for Two Copper. And uh, also uh, played bowls as well. Played bowls for Northland, in fact. Now lives in Australia. And then the, the man at Vogeltown, he's part of the whole Yagush family and very, very much the sort of the brand of the Vogeltown Bowling Club. Now, there is a, a West End club in Auckland as well. Correct. Just over the hill, just, just a couple of streets over. Well, uh, the West End club bowl here from... Raymond Martin. So part of the history of the West End Club here in Auckland was actually formed by the publicans of Auckland for them to go and have a game of bowls on a Wednesday. That's <laughs> <laughs> and and so too is the what was the the Canterbury Club right in the uh, in the in the right in the city area um, of Christchurch, and that too was. The land and gentry and publicans of Christchurch, they would go there for a, a that was their afternoons uh, entertainment as, as it was here uh, at, at the West End Bowling Club, just just cl close to the well Ponsonby Ponsonby Bowling Club and West End Bowling Club are literally one street away from one another. Yeah, exactly, which is always confusing for everybody. So Raymond Martin now is back into his draw, holding two, forcing Dean Elgin now. <laughs> Change his hand. And in the pairs, what the. 7 4 now. Taranaki got the mat again, so it won't be 7 4 in a minute. So that early big break that Wellington had. Here comes the bowl of Elgin, needs to get cleanly underneath, won't quite do so. And it is still 1. 1 Taranaki. 
One, two, Taranaki, that mate shot there, that, that pole there of Dean Algers that, that rested at Jack Level. You would have heard Mike Small confirming at the last pole of Algers is shot. Here is Raymond Martin now trying to reach up to what is the shot pole or Jack going to be under the line. In fact, we'll get the Dean Elgar bulk turn it into, into the head. Doesn't make any difference. There's indication from Mike Small. 7-5 now in that Pierce match. Wellington leading Taranaki, 7-5. It is the uh, Andrew Kelly leading Morris Symes. And, and of course, it's, it's strange, isn't it? In years gone by, Andrew Kelly and Morris Symes played out of the same club in Christchurch, both played out of the old Canterbury Club. Morris Symes now, of course, the greenkeeper at what is the uh, Fitzroy Club. Um, again, and there was a surf club near there, or fish yeah, yeah, there's, been a surf there's, club. there's two surf clubs right along there, the Fitzroy Surf Club and East End Surf Club. They're right next door to one another. And at the East End Club, they've got two greens there, and uh, the two greens are separated by the Tianui River that runs uh, r- run, runs through the very... It's a park-like situation. You've got, you've got the sea on one side, and then you've got this little river that uh, not little river. It's a it's a well known river that runs uh, that runs through right up towards the cemetery and and uh, so East End Bowling Club has always been there. The Fitzroy Club was further up the road, and a few years ago Fitzroy closed up and they amalgamated um, uh, with with East End. It's a beautiful picturesque club uh, d- down on the water. And Morris Symes is the greenkeeper at. Uh, at, at East End. Of course, Morris's wife, Val, she's in the Taranaki side, in the women's side here as well. So here is Martin, definitely one down on the head, playing his last bowl, leading 6-5. How's the line to the jack this time? Well, the bowl looks pretty good. Just depends which side he gets. Well, oh, he, he's lost it. I think he, he may have lost he, that he, point. Head Let's goes down. Take a look. Is it one? Is it two? Just the one? You'll see there, Mike Small with the lollipop. Well, we've got six all now in the singles, and in the fours, we have five each. Well, <laughs> we do have five each, so I'll just recheck on that. I believe we have just and one five second five. on that. Five all in the fours. Yeah, it was a five to start with uh, for Wellington, I think it was, and then uh, Naki have just edged their way back into it. Well, I saw Hamish Carpey do that, in fact, earlier on this year, but not at the early stages of the game. In fact, it was the very, very last end in the final of the Taranaki Open Fours playing Peter Ballas, where they moved the jack right back towards the ditch and scored a five to win the Taranaki Open Fours. <laughs> it's quite phenomenal how it looks as though something's all sorted at all. Let's just write the name down in. Uh, we'll write it in there, and uh, that's it. Well, look, uh, look, Dave, I suppose one of the great things of why I, I'm passionate about, love, love the sport, love covering it, is because uh, nothing's constant and nothing's certain. And I always, like, I always enjoy when you get to this stage of these events where you've got the best players in action. They're really playing, in this case, for their provincial pride and their teammates and... Uh, it's it's tremendous to be uh, to cover these and and be part of it, and it's it's great from a you know the bowling public, so to speak, who can now sit at home, uh, either in their lounge or the clubhouse or wherever they want to be, and they can watch the Taranaki side, for example. They can sit there now and watch the live action and watch the the Taranaki side or Wellington side, uh, watch them. Uh, in the rent-free shield of bo- rent-free shield of bowls, as we call it. So, uh, the coverage that we're now able to bring, not only to those, uh, not not to non-bowlers, but to the bowling fraternity, uh, I just think it's fantastic. And we do have Ray Martin now with the ball, just quite a legitimate style, is what what I'd call it. Would you call it? A yeah, he's a bit of a claw holder, so to speak. Yeah, he's the way he is, but. Uh, He's got a very, very smooth delivery, you know. And now, one of the reasons why that is as well, also because Raymond plays a lot on carpet. Now, on carpet, your delivery, 
your point of delivery, everything has got to be smooth, seamless, faultless. Because you, know, you see the guys on carpet, they draw within you know, centimetres, so to speak. So you can't have rough deliveries. So, you know, the good, like Andrew Kelly's the same. These guys who do play quite a bit on carpet, you'll find that their delivery um, is just about faultless. More importantly, it's the same every bowl. Morris Symes is not a great fan of playing at clubs. Uh, you know, outdoor clubs like Queenstown, for instance. You know, he loved the scenery, I, but he didn't don't, like the artificial. Oh, absolutely. I, yeah. Only one. Yep. Now, is that just because of... I won't say age, but because he hasn't experienced it as much. Or He's he, a greenkeeper. He, well, that's a, good, that's a fair point. He doesn't have to do anything with those greens. <laughs> He's a greenkeeper. Yeah, just has to spray but, on some... Uh, look, to be fit, in defence of what Morris is saying, I, I, I agree with him a lot. Uh, because to me, you know, do you play test cricket on an artificial surface? But then in a place such as Queenstown, for instance... You, you can't play all year round. Absolutely. Now, I, what what I'm really saying, that, uh, Dave, is oh, I'd be disappointed there from Elga. What I'm really saying is that, yes, you need those. They're a fantastic asset to have for your club for to play all year round. Uh, you know, you're not exposed to the same weather elements as what you are with a, a, with a, a natural surface green. But I still think if we talk about for at that top level, as we'll call it, or this this level, as we'll say. Um, it's a two to... Two. two. Could be three, in fact. Just, Let's uh, wait for the lollipop. It is two it is. Two. So for the purist and for the person who really likes the challenge of the sport and the natural surface like we've got here in front of us right now, you know, that's, to me, is... that's. That's where we should be. However, if we're playing a Wednesday tournament or a club roll-up or whatever, whatever, nothing wrong at all with playing on, as we call it, the artificial or carpet or whatever you want to, uh, however you want to term it. But can't get away from uh, what is the best. This is the best. And, you know, if I take a place like Taranaki and Christchurch, now, the reason why Taranaki have got now what I would say a number of good, consistent bot players is because of the greens. They've got greens like them. Good yeah. greens. The reason why Auckland have struggled is they haven't got the same quality in the main of the good greens. Is that because of finance? Is that because of lack of green keepers? Or is that because of climate? Well, we've, well, we've had climate came into it. We had lived in the side with a fallacy that cochula wasn't a good growing weed in Auckland, and we went to the starweed composition surface, which is, you ask any of the players from out of town will tell you it is the most difficult, unenjoyable surface to play on. Because what happens is, and Morris Symes will tell you this, is that the starweed gets a hump on the top of the weed, and and it, and bowls shimmy around on it, and it's just it's just it's not the same experience as what this offers. Now, if you're wondering where the jack is, it's just in front of the light blue bowl of Ray Martin. However, this bowl of Dean Alga meter short nine five now Wellington leading in the pairs at just under the halfway mark nine five to Wellington Martin now on his forehand. Leading Dean, Ma Dean uh, Elgar, 8 6. Now don't say Dean Martin. <laughs> That'll really confuse people. Uh, if we can get another look from the bowler's angle in just a moment, you'll be able to see. Well, you won't be able to see. There, you there go. it is. And that. Now, the really t good thing about the second bowler, Raymond Martins, and, and the difficulty for Dean Elgar, it's a straight line head. Yep. There's nothing to use rub off or whatever so it becomes um, challenging as soon you'll see the Elga now go on a meter past lane two this is the sort of head that you can two good balls can set yourself up for, for a very very good end and there's no danger here now for uh, Raymond Martin except that he won't want to give a, a jack level shoulder uh, on that forehand side he's going to 
the backhand. That's a good start. What he's doing here, of course, endeavouring to cover that bowl of Dean Elgers in behind the head. And if he can get to it, he'll still count. And that's what he's trying to do. And will Julie do, do so? Now, I think Elgar's got to try and attack that now. It is three. And you'll see that straight line down there now. He's going to have to try and attack that, I think, down through. I'm waiting to get some confirmation from the... Well, I've got the confirmation, actually. It's... Uh, Congratulations to Tim's Valley Woman. Yeah, exactly. You said they were a smaller centre. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Made it through the yeah, and I don't know who the other four are behind, but they, looking at now, they would be the smallest centre that is qualified. To, we saw them playing yesterday, didn't we? We saw them play the, the lady with the shot put delivery. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Elga on the charge, trying to get down to the shot bowl. He's going to get his front bowl, though. Will it go straight through? No, rocks it. Now, yeah, all of a sudden, we're looking at a four with one bowl to come. Because Raymond Martin will definitely play to the head. He's got nothing to lose now. So, As we see the view from the bowler's end. And... From this view, well, it seems a long way away, doesn't it? If, you, if I'm Dean Elgar standing on the mat, it looks a very, very long way away. <laughs> and that jack looks like a pinhead. <laughs> it does. <laughs> so Raymond Martin on the backhand, endeavouring to make four of it with a bowl to come. See the lollipops already ready. <laughs> yeah, it really is at the ready. Yeah, coming down. Doesn't want to move the jack, won't do so, sits out to the... Well, there it is. Coming to have a look at it is Dean Elgar. Lovely end. Now, the thing for Dean Elgar to be careful of that he doesn't err to try and get on the width of that bowl out to the side there because nine times out of ten he'll go past and not get anything. We've got a young bowler there on the pram. Oh, yes, there's the little one here. I think, is that Nathan Glasson? Uh, uh, Canterbury boy. So the line is one bowl under that to be able to get splash contact in, into the target area because you can go by it just as easy. Taking a last look. Quite a long walk when you go back to the mat after seeing a view like that. Yeah, well, the, the, I, I suppose you could say for Dean Elgar. It gives him time. He reassesses. Look, he's watching now. The head seem uh, what's what's going on. He, he knows what he's got to play. He's played enough bowls over the years. He knows how much this bowl means. Four down. He knows what he's got to play. And you notice he's playing in the middle of the mat, so he hasn't come out to the side. So that means that he needs to hold up now. Gets the inside outside. Got one. And you can see what I meant. Dave, he needed to be inside the head, but he needed a, another bowl's width to be able to get to the target. Three down, 11 sixth in the race to 25. Well, nice to get up, uh, get up into the double figures for Ray Martin from Wellington. And our Taranaki man, Din Alga, left behind at the moment to six. Uh, Dean Elgar will be disappointed to have two drives on that uh, head and, you know, not really been able to get, uh, uh, you know, a, re a result, a satisfactory result. Jack's going to be lost again. This is the this is the third time now that Raymond Martin has uh, lost to Jack. Now, Dean, now, Dean Elgar, we'll wait and see. He may well decide to shorten this right up, change the length around. I can tell you after seven ends and the fours, it is 6-5, Wellington over Taranaki. Oh, it's anybody's, and 9-5 in the pairs is still at the halfway mark, or just on the halfway mark, really. Dave, that, uh, that's anybody's as well. I don't think we've actually got a certainty anywhere. Not sure. at all. In the singles, it's a, a nice lead. That can change in one end. It, exactly. And that's why now that... that you know, Raymond Martin, uh, you know, he's just got to keep that, keep that going. He's got, played that last in so well. 
You might want to try and leave the gate too wide open for you know, the very well performed Nelga, and he's not going to as he comes down towards the jack right on the centre line. Front toucher and just moves that yellow jack ever so slightly. We've been talking a little bit about artificial surfaces. What about for someone like Alex Reed, one of our commentary team? He uh, is an indoor player, so he's artificial all the way. He's, he's an avid indoor player. He's a yeah. mat player. Yeah, exactly. He's, he would love that. Artificial all the way. No, he, he's been playing indoor uh, today, actually. And trying oh, to... Nice. Out, well, oh, although he, nice. hasn't got, well, he hasn't got the shot there now, but he'll be pretty happy with that bowl because you've got another bowl uh, right on the head. Look, look, I admire Alex on his, his and Colin, of course, they're the defending New Zealand peers title holders. Uh, and some people are, uh, they really enjoy their indoor bowls, and Alex is one of those. It was never something that I was a fan of. No, I just, well, could have given the shot away there. Gee, has it could switched well around? It's hard to tell from this angle. Might have to have a look, perhaps, from the bowler's angle. We get a chance. Oh, drink. Oh. Let's have a look from the. Uh, well, it looks like one to Dean Elgar from here. Hold yep, there we go. It is. Taranaki. Well, from such a good bowl, he's <laughs> turned it around. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Martin got it perfectly and just got onto the jack, got onto the bowl. And Dean Elgar has played another good bowl here. Or oh, he's not going to... Well, that's a good-looking head, but Raymond Martin can... Just the one, I think. Getting the... Mike Small having a good look. One. One. There we go. Uh, it's, but because any contact on the front. Third shot is Dean's last bowl. Third shot is the back bowl. So he'll be endeavouring to turn that bowl. One of those two blue bowls, Raymond Martin, will be endeavouring to turn, that, turn them into the head. On the forehand is Raymond Martin. And I'll just wait till this bowl comes to rest. Dave, but this has played well. This has played well. Tips the bowl one up. That's great control of weight. Now, if you go back to the other day when we saw Raymond Martin play, he was early on in the game, he was, I'm not saying it's sixes and sevens, but didn't have that, what I would call, 80% effectiveness. We've now seen the last three ends. He's got... He's getting bowls now consistently, not just one, but getting two or three, all within a mat of the the jack. So what it means, of course, it makes it that much harder for Dean Elgar to score numbers. Elgar here will play that on the back end, try and shunt onto the back of the bowl, and which would jar that bowl out of the head. And I'm still questioning that Wellington four side well, it's, cause I see. So, so the four side now we had that change what was the change that we had well kind of hope came but I just see Robbie Bird walking around there though he so have we had was, another change well I'm not sure you know, that's well, we might have to if, get Brendan if, to I was just going to say we might get Brendan to just actually check wh who, yeah. what is that Wellington four side because um, yeah I, I there's, to me, there's definitely some, some changes to what I thought the side was. So, well played. Let's see, here's Mike Carroll, who, of course, will be part of the New Zealand management team. Yeah, there's Robbie Bird. He's standing behind the. I had Robbie Bird down leading. He's standing behind there. Mike Carroll, the manager, the very always... Always uh, busy, Mike Carroll. He'll be keeping a very close eye on his Wellington side. Here's Martin again. Look at this. If he gets through clean, gets just by the head. One. So the situation here for no, never Dean Elgar. No. Only a one-shot opportunity just to jar onto the front of that bowl and endeavouring to turn it through, move on to the jack. Here's Elgin now on his backhand.
trying to get all the way back to the jack and the, trying to get all the way back to the jack oh but that was a that was a cigarette paper to the jack there a touch touch on the jack of make two 12 six now 12 six to raymond martin in this race to uh, 25 nine six wellington that's uh, andrew kelly Stephen Ditford playing against morris symes and Craig DeFaria, and it is 9-6 to the uh, Wellington side, and I believe from our last check that the uh, fours was uh, literally all locked up. Well, I can tell you about the fours. The Wellington team, Robbie, Finbar, Caleb, and Blake. So there we go. We're just going with the first names there right, for a moment. Yes, yes. And we'll be able to tell you the score in just one moment. Any updated score? Uh, give me two seconds. That one. This is... Of course, from my memory, no. Uh, we'll just take a quick look at that as we come down for it in just one moment. And uh, let's see what we've got coming through. And in a second, it is in the fours, seven, five after eight. That's to Wellington in the fours. So it's still anyone's game, but again, we see here again... Um, Dave, that with Raven Martin, that first bowl effectiveness, getting that control control of the jack, control of the head, getting that first bowl very close, straight away putting the pressure on your opponents. Dean Elgar, not quite there, just falling slightly short. And I can't stress enough how much difference it makes, that uh, first bowl effectiveness. It just, but I can tell you one thing about Dean Elgar, it doesn't matter what the score is; he's never out of the match. He's one of the, he's a real, a real fighter. Is uh, the uh, Taranaki singles player? Doesn't matter what discipline he's playing, a real fighter. There's Raymond Martin. Now I'd like to have a look at the the starts here of Dean Alga. That's how he sets himself up as well. I want to see the feet. Yeah, exactly a bowl low. Bowl low, you'll hear there from Mike Small. Let's see his footwork. Stayed down quite nicely and then quick lift up. It's just, the difference is uh, really, Dave, that he really uses one foot stand on the mat, whereas most of the other players use a two foot stand on the mat, you know, whether, you know, feet locked in against one another or feet parallel. He's one foot up and one foot back uh, sort, of, sort of player. Um, would you coach that? No, but you know, that's, that's not to say... No, not for a starter, anyway. No, no, that, that's not to say that it's not right. Um, uh, it's worked for him for... Well, exactly. You know, it's one of New Zealand singles, he's one of New Zealand fours, so here's this... this is, what's really, what's, well, what's really impressing me with Raymond Martin, and it did as well yesterday, that... When he finds his way to where he needs to be, his consistency level. You now, if you're playing, like for example, when we go to Australia next next week, uh, the week after next, when we line up over there against the, the countries and the multinations, you, you've got to be playing at an 80, 85 percent consistency um, right throughout. Like just like we're seeing there, and uh, you know the difference between trying to get down clean to the jack. He's going to sit and stay. Falls out, Jack level, and it's shot. Oh, there you go. Nice. He was pretty excited about that as well. Yeah, he liked it. Out it. Out well, he knew that if he got past the front bowl to Raymond Martins, he was on a he was on a dead line to the Jack. Now, would we get in trouble for saying that your wife is the president of the Ray Martin Fan Club? Let's just say you would. Marlene's pretty <laughs> been a fan of. Raymond's for a number of years. And like for, like for Marlene, who played 16 years for New Zealand, has been a New Zealand selector, um, she delights in seeing, you know, the younger players. I've got you in trouble, haven't No, I? it's fine. You know, she was, you know, you know, Val Smith, for example, started off, um, you know, play, like playing with, uh, with Marlene, Joe Edwards. Uh, and, you know, Marlene just enjoys watching these now, the development of these younger players. Now look at that for a bit Ten of a change. Nine. Yeah, Ten nine. Ten nine. The lead has changed in the pairs. 
And who we got for each uh, combination for each team there? So the Taranaki uh, uh, side, the Taranaki Pierce side, is uh, Craig DeFaria, who's leading with Morris Symes skipping. And they're up against the, the Wellington combination of uh, Stephen Ditfit and Andrew Kelly. So, you know, very, very you know, a good, well, two very, very good pairs. Craig DeFaria had a, um, uh, in years gone by, had a name change. Uh, he was actually, used to be Craig Johns. And his father, Bruce Johns, um, won a New Zealand Pairs. Um, playing, in fact, with a chap called uh, one New Zealand Pairs with uh, Alan Crow, and played out of the Paratudu Club. Uh, and, and later RS, the RSA club, but uh, Bruce Johns um, played for Taranaki for many, many, many years. So the the, 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 the youngsters not playing his last bowl. I'm happy with I'm happy with one. You could see he didn't want to. Uh, well, he didn't want to touch the jack. That was his, you know. I, Shouldn't but you try and go well, for two. Well, or the only thing that I would say to, to Dean uh, is. <coughs> He just wants to score. He's not 100% confident of Harry's of, of Harry's playing. And look, I've got the jack now. I've got the mat. I'm going to. I've got some control. Also, he's looking. I would say, he's looking. Hello, we're in front in the piers. It's all close in the fours. I don't want to risk anything. But risk. surely, if you're his opponent, you're thinking, okay, I might have lost that by one. But, but it could have been two. Yeah, but my opponent is a bit. Chicken. Yeah, well, you, you are, look, I, I was surprised he didn't elect to play that, you know, but I, but I think... I mean, the, I'm, I'm saying, when I say chicken, I'm thinking yeah, as the opponent yeah. would go, hang on, he's a bit, he doesn't want to do this. Well, this will tell with his first bowl, really. Played the jack right to the two-metre mark. Yeah, to justify that, he wants to get this literally, well, pretty close. Going to go by the two-metre mark, and that's not too bad, really, to start with. Half a metre over, good line. And here is the very steady Raymond Martin. You'll notice the good thing is I like about Raymond Martin as well with his delivery is that he stays down, the body doesn't move up. You won't see him start to move up until the jack is toucher, until day that that bowl is out out in front of him, so it just reduces the margin of error of the bowl going all over the place. The Olga quickly into his work, following the Raymond Martin bowl. Question. Line's good now, but how's the weight? Uh, it's just going to dip slightly jack low, but it's another bowl on the head. Mike Small. Mike Small, the marker reminds me a bit of the... Uh, a wee bit like the AFL umpires. He's very quickly out of the... <laughs> well, the AFL started this uh, weekend. It did, underway this weekend. And I can tell you that all of my teams are quite unpleasant. <laughs> Results-wise oh, oh. and everything else as well. And this is... Well, we're looking at a one at the moment, perhaps, to Wellington. Yeah, think? it is the one. Well, I can tell you, after living in Melbourne for five years, uh, one had to uh, follow a, uh, an Australian rules side, because if you didn't, you were just sort of... You were nothing. And, uh, <laughs> no I can one say that all of my teams, really, when no I one, say... No one spoke to you. <laughs> they're unpleasant. Uh, it means enough Jack things searching. going on off the field as well, having been to a lot of their practice venues for work. Uh, very interesting the way that AFL actually works. It is. In the meantime, we do have Ray Martin here off his forehand, walks down a few strides. He's got the shot, well, we believe he's got the shot from he's that got, angle. He's definitely got the shot, and he's going to now just, well, he doesn't want to get the back of the bog clean. Well, he sits one out, could be one in, one out. We'll see what Mike Small, yeah, just still, still the one. Still just the one now. I'm picking Elga. Will endeavour just to, his line has been uh, out of out of kilter. His line has been out of kilter. He now needs to get that line right, get that touch on the jack, and can make uh, three shots of this with that uh, jack movement. Ten nine now. Uh, Taranaki leading in the pairs. 
Uh, and we must be ready for the end of this, for the completion of this end. So uh, here's just looking for the jack is Elga that we just spoke about. Needs to be inside, not outside. And fell back in and out. So we'll still be the one. Mike Small indicating very quickly that it remains the one as Raymond Martin moves his way back to the to the mat. He was only half a bowl away from getting a good result. And looking at the pairs from here, whoops, we've got a Taranaki back in the way. Oh, there you go. There's all the clubs. We do have a completion of ends in the pairs, so we'll get a score update in just a moment. But in the meantime... Well, look at him, Morris. Oh, got, got the measure out. And Stephen Ditford, I see, has got the jack in his hand, so it must have been Wellington. Yep, there we go. Just the one. Just the one. I'll check on the fours in just a moment. See what the score is there. Updated score coming in. So Raymond Martin endeavouring to make it two. Definitely got one. Just going to be under the head with his line. Will it count? It may well. Falls out. Not in. Could still count. It is. There it is very quickly. Mike Small indicating. 14-7 now. 14-7 to... Raymond Martin versus uh, Dean Elga of uh, Taranaki. And at the fours, it is Wellington seven, Taranaki six. That is after nine ends. So where are you feeling comfortable? Which province, which centre is feeling the most comfortable at the moment? Neither. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Don't feel comfortable. <laughs> Taking a look here at Ray Martin with his first bowl. A decent lead, up to 25, of course, in the singles, and 18 ends it is in the pairs. Well, it does become a bit strategic now as things start to, well, to, we even to move along because, you know, the, the, the pairs and the fours, there's nothing, there's nothing in those games. So, you know, it could come a two-game shootout, really, to... to uh, <laughs> That's really so. Dean Elga will be certainly wanting to catch up as close as he can because all you're doing, the further that jumps out, is you're just putting the pressure uh, back on your other two disciplines, and, and especially when you've got two tight encounters. Well, we did even see the you know Dean Elga not even completing his end with one bowl. That was surprising that that, and that just showed a wee bit of surprising that lack of. Uh, well, I'm not going to say lack of confidence, but just uh, questioning his own, w w w how he's going, I would say, more than anything. But With everybody this... so close, we've got to remember there are no time limits in the quarters or the semis and finals tomorrow. The, the thing that Dean Elg has got to be aware of is that, and he would be aware of, that Raymond Martin's lifted his game substantially and now he's getting you know, three out of four bowls, which are, are, are literally effective. And this bowl of Dean Elgers, unless the jack moves considerably, is not really say that it's effective. So Raymond Martin's getting more effective bowls on the head, which means that he can build a head, whereas Dean Elgers literally trying to score one or save a head. And sooner or later that, that takes its toll. It's, this one looks to be on target as well. Short. No, you're going short? Oh, it is. You're right. Okay, I should not go up against you in any decisions there. Come on, I've got one right somewhere. <laughs> yeah, Loving meter it. and a half low, and but you know he can draw around that no problem. Elga, you get the, always you know only you get the shot with your four, fourth bowl. You want to make sure you've got it before then. And this looks a tidier bowl, but I'm still going to question though. And he might finish up with shot. No, he won't. But what I will question, he has still got the shot. question on that hand, it is taking longer to get the draw back to the centre line. It's just sitting out there fractionally. Whereas the other hand, which Raymond Martin will play in about a moment, I think he'll play. Well, we do now have the shot or the one point 
It's so just, unlucky. It's just got a con no, he's going with weight here. Look at that. You recall it. He's going with weight to the shot bowl outside it. Well, that didn't really help for anything. What, what I'm saying, David, is, is I just feel that you've got a kind of draw back to the centre line. Uh, on the other hand, you'll just notice halfway down the green there, uh, nothing wrong with the surface, nothing wrong with the surface. It's just taking longer to starting to move towards the, to, towards the centre line. And, of course, the danger is you try and bring that in fractionally and you're going to start d ducking and diving uh, under the centre line. Oh, we go. And may even, look, he's not, may even change his hand here. And he is. I just feel that the philosophy of the previous couple of events ago when he didn't play the last ball, he could almost do the same thing here. He's got the one. Well, he's got, the thing is, he's got a far kind of draw down through here and his buddies. Now, that highlights to me that there are two different weights. Because he just played that on a natural draw and that, that went for a, a draw to the head and that went through by eight feet. That signals that to me that it's a different, it's, a, it's different to the, to the other, other hand. And you can see there the body language of uh, Dean Elgar. He's sort of, saying, well, he's not sure where the balls are going. Well, Kevin, how about we just take a little break and uh, thank one of our sponsors of uh, Bowls NZ. Uh, that is Somerset. And great to have everybody back there. Nice little ad there from Somerset, one of our chief sponsors of this sport around New Zealand. And in the meantime, we have the first bowl already delivered by Dean Alger. And this is Ray Martin here from Wellington. Watching the bowl all the way down. And uh, Kevin Hicklin, we're still not totally convinced, are we, <laughs> of anyone grabbing and saying, this is mine. Ten all in the uh, correct and... You know, if I'm going to say, if we talk about consistency, Ray Martin has more than likely had more effective slash consistent bowls than what Dean Elgar has had. But Dean Elgar being the fighter, he turned his back on that one straight away. And that's, he's fighting the green. He's fighting it big time. Now, there's no reason that's going to go in the ditch on the draw. Now, and, and it was... It was very, very wide. Oh, pretty tight, I think. Yep. That highlights to me a player who is really struggling to really find where he's at. See him there standing there pondering, thinking. Well, he's doing okay for someone who's not totally convinced. The thing about Dean Alger is that he's a real, like, he, he's a real fighter and, and, and he's beating himself up. But don't, look, let's not fool ourselves. This guy, I don't remember, this is the same guy that he is. Martin. Who did he beat for the singles? Blake Sigmund. Not bad. Got a four on the last end to win. Blake Sigmund didn't have a bowl on the green. Played at Paratutu. Oh, of course you'll remember it. It's in Taranaki. I can give you a fours update, and it is Wellington 9-6 after 10. So that's in the fours. Well, there's the sign that we were just talking about, but straight into the ditch. Well, that was well played by uh, Dean Elgar. He's, he's frustrated with how he's going. He's struggling. And Raymond Martin drew that jack-level bowl. So, right, I'm going to run that straight into the ditch. Did it muck around. Got onto it and delivered it. There's Mrs. Symes, I see. Well, Symes sitting there watching. So 
Obviously, Taranaki women didn't qualify for post section. So, watch this bowler, Raven Martins, tracking down towards the dips. There it is. The lollipop men done a wonderful job. Definitely, There's yes. Mike Small, definitely one, two. He hasn't said much, has he? Because he hasn't needed to. Uh, he's, well, it's great Slightly to have a marker. Uh, where, 1200. There you go, 1,200. That's the... <laughs> yeah, quite definitive with his Oh, very much answers. so. And, and I know Alex has just uh, t t turned up Aiden Zitterstein there. That there's nothing better to have a marker who is you know, very, very definitive in, in what they say and you know and you're confident standing on the mat that if he or she has said that's what the situation is, that's what it is. Now that has gone wide. Yeah, he's really struggling. Not sure where it's ended up actually. Way out on the, the wide it boundary. Still in bounds? Yeah. He, again, this is where I think Alan Batley, the Taranaki manager, uh, if I was sitting in his shoes right now, I'd just be suggesting to Dean Elgar, look, mate, let's uh, make a trip to the little boys' room. Here you go, here you go. That's a great view. And, yeah, I'd be saying, let's, look, uh, let's, have, a, let's have a trip to the little boys' room and uh, let's just have a bit of a, a chat and just do yourself up a wee bit. And it is the one. Well, for someone who may not be playing with the greatest confidence, he's just won that end. He's fought his way to 49, really. And it was, uh, Dean did have one bowl out of bounds there. And in the meantime, he's managed to get that. Well, uh, Taranaki now two in front of the pairs. 12-10. And don't forget, of course, all of the results of these quarterfinals that have been played at Burnside. They will all be published up on the Bowls New Zealand website. As Kevin, uh, you'll be back here again at 8.30 tomorrow morning, I believe, for the semifinals. 8.30, Alex and I will be here. <laughs> Alex is going to early mass. <laughs> yeah, we'll be back here at 8.30. And... Uh, so that will take us through the men's and women's semi-finals and then later in the day we'll have the finals. I don't know what the time frame is of the program for tomorrow. Whether Normally what they endeavour to do is play them early, get them so the players can get out of town um, and save on a night's accommodation. Really, that's... Uh, there have been issues with flights over the last couple of years, getting in and out of places. It, absolutely. You know, and you may well see... Well, I, I know I doubt that some centres... Uh, may well go be how they travel by road, but those that have flown here, by oh goodness, I just took a quick look at those three bowls on the next rig of Stephen Dick. We can see they're all to our left from the view now. By oh goodness, that's a one, two, three. Yeah, all they'll go on the drive though for that uh, from that end. Oh, signs connected it, got it. It just about took out the Taranaki player's foot. Uh, they got the. That was a, a great bowl from Morris Symes there. So here now back to Raymond Martin. One down. Jack on the two metre mark. And this should be the shot as it just crawls its way. And it is. He had the lollipop out. He had it out really first. quick. Did, uh, did Mike Small. 49. We haven't seen many big ends of late. It's just been ones chipping away. Well, this is interesting. That's this is really, this is really interesting. Oh, gee. It was close to target. It really was. Well, I, I, look, I don't know what it's trying to say now with Dean. Yeah, trying to get that jack again in the ditch. You've got one bowl left. Well, it's best to play it with your third bowl, not your fourth bowl. And I'm picking that it'll endeavour to draw with a pen to this bowl goes with Raymond Martins, but... One would think that he will endeavour to draw because that's a hard tuck. Well, I don't know. He might just go there. Is he on two? Perhaps. Let's have a look. We can almost tell. No, we've got a head in the way. 
come in to have a look at it. It's close for two. Indicated one. Possible measure for two, maybe. Yeah, I don't think there's that drive for the ditch. Because remembering, of course, that yeah, Raymond's still got a bowl left as, as well. It's sort of highlighting to me, though, Dave, that sadly at this point of the game that uh, Dean hasn't got the normal confidence with his draw as uh, what I would normally see with him. But I don't think it's the head to drive at because you're still going to leave, you know, if you miss it, you know, yeah, you're still leaving plenty of room for Raymond Martin to to, to draw another 12-10. 12-10 Taranaki leading in the pairs. I see the measures out. And Elga, yes, going for the draw. Needs to be down and around this front blue. Looks to be going pretty quick, though, on the way through and is. So Dean Elga there from Taranaki with the darker blue bowls. And it is Ray Martin Wellington. Originally from the Naki, he has the lighter blue balls. And uh, just walking backwards, giving another look, keeping an eye on the Jack and his one, perhaps two. We're looking at one at the moment, aren't we? And we are. Measure for two. And it was Wellington that scored on that last end in the pairs. That being the 12, it's now 12 11 to Taranaki, 12 11 over Wellington. Well, let's have a look and see if we can actually make it. Definite two, possible oh, three. Ah, this is interesting. Change this hands. is interesting. He's trying to play the shunt bowl here onto the front of the bowl, jar the bowl right out of the head for four shots. That's what he was trying to play there. It's ambitious. Ambitious, but there was no danger. And Good there was point. no danger because Dean Elgin didn't have bowls on the didn't have bowls on the head. Are we one still or we're doing a measure? I think we are doing a measure for two. So at the moment it is one to Wellington and Ray Martin to take him to 16. Well, if he measures for one, he could measure for three. Now, very quickly, he made that decision. So it's a two, definite? Okay, well, there you go. He goes up to a seven. Just the team. one. No, one. Oh, okay. Just I the one. I saw them kicking away the... Well, he'll take one. And uh, they sort of had uh, the second still there, but then... Kicked it away. I think it, hey, Raymond Martin really has. Uh, we know Raymond, Raymond Martin's a top player. Let's not. Let's not. So he's not. He certainly is. But Dean Elgo would be disappointed at this stage that he hasn't been able to really, only on but a couple of ends, really put the pressure uh, on uh, Raymond, Raymond Martin because he's just been struggling to find his way and that score there for the singles it should be 16-9 it'll be coming up in just a moment interested in the Wellington side uh, Alex that they elected to put Stephen Ditford and Andrew Kelly together thus leaving Seamus Curtin out of the seven which was somewhat surprising Yes, yeah, certainly. I think it's probably a reflection of the um, the rules change, isn't it, Kev? We have the managers that can sort of you know, make a call on form. I suppose I don't know. I haven't been. <laughs> I haven't been here. Well, we, we remarked before though that we saw that game yesterday where Wellington got got beaten in the pairs, and uh, Seamus did struggle. To, you know, they got they got quite soundly beaten. Now, here's what I mean, Dave, about where. Dean Elgar hasn't been able to apply the pressure. You know, the door has been left open, not just the door, the motorway was left open by a good couple of metres and he falls eight feet short. Now, that's just not how Dean Elgar plays the game. He's, he's you know, we we all know how good a player uh, Dean Elgar is. I think he's made, he's made amends here with this one. Yep, as we watch this bowl of Dean Elgar's heart's oh, going to gonna pull up short as well, I think. That's disappointing, isn't it? Because he's had the perfect green twice, uh, but has played two bowls in the same spot. So his correction of what one and a half meters was more, more like a foot. 
I, I just wonder, Alex, where that, I don't know, has the green, looking at the heads, whether the green's lost a couple of seconds or... That can happen, can't it? Um, it absolutely, it can as happen. As the day goes on. As the day goes on. So this is a must draw now, because right now he's three down. And there's nothing to hit, is there? Nothing to hit. Yeah. It's only a dead draw. Now we should have just explained the scoring there. We did say that it should have gone up to 16. However, no, that is correct. 15, 9. Just a little bit of scoring was very quick, <laughs> you might say. Oh, Dean. This is... Uh, this is a man under a bit of pressure here. Yeah, the same yeah. weight three times. And, Certainly uh, is. Ray Martin, uh, like a shark, and mortar will be smelling some blood. Looking to make it holding four, which would put it up to wow. 19 9. And a bowl to come from Dean. He's got a chance of holding four without getting out of bed, <laughs> really, because, you know, he's got one bowl close and the others are. Uh, wow, well, is this going to make it? Is this going to make it? No. Well, it will with luck. So, no, oh, it says three. Three. So, Dean Elgar, more coming for a walk here for his, for uh, to settle yourself, isn't <laughs> oh, it? Yes, because it's a simple, a simple shot. He's well, he's looking at the other game. He's looking at the game next door. He, he's just trying to, and now he's looking at the other game. He's just trying to, well, yeah. Just had a bit of a drive going on there in the pairs. And he knows full well that... Uh, and the other thing as well, Dave, as far as Dean Elgar's concerned, he is sort of like the mainstay of the Taranaki side. So, you know, everyone looks to Dean for a strong performance. It's I'm just sure Morris Simons would like you to well, say that. Well I'll, well, I'll say he is for the number of titles which Dean has won uh, consistently over a number of years. Now, the wind has just picked up, and it's suddenly gone from quite nice, warm that is, to a little bit chilly. So I don't know if that's really going to affect them, but the wind has certainly picked up. So got the ball away, wider out of the hand, that's for sure. Now, how's the weight? That's how's the question. How's the weight, though? How's the weight? Needs, to, needs a lot of help now. Oh, he would be so... Yeah. As a player, he's put three bowls that are touching each other, and they're all shorter than he would have wanted them to be. It is disappointing. They're eight feet short. And that's not the way how this guy plays the game, right? To me, now, go, go and have a walk, Dean. That would be... Let's see, is it three or four? Well, I thought it was four, but, you know, Mike three. that indicated three. My goodness, that ball's got a bit of a kick. Go. No, no, that's a four. Let's have a look at the lollipops now, unless he's holding it wrong. It looks like all, it is it is all it four. Is four. It is all four. Okay, so that is a big jump. And talking about jumps, well, we can say in the fours, it is Wellington at 11, Taranaki 7, and that is after 12 ends. Oh, 12 of 15, so, um, you know, it's... Let's just say right now, the pressure time, the pressure is uh, pretty big on uh, the, the, uh, the Taranaki boys. So, yes, the Naki uh, will be feeling the pressure. And who's their manager? What should he be doing there, Kevin? Alan Batley. I'm somewhat surprised. He might be a bit scared to go and talk to Dean. But <laughs> uh, Alan Batley's the, the, the manager. That. But, you know, Martin you know, owned the length, owned the jack, owned the first bowl, which, he, which he's just done. And 99, seven from home, long way to go. I know, well, it's still a long way to go. And Dean will be bitterly disappointed of he's not been able to see again. Here we go. Look, under the head, and nothing, you know, no line on the bowl at all. You get the feel that this game is rapidly nearing a conclusion, isn't it, Kev? Yeah, it is. I've said that before. Uh, oh, well, I've said it before, and then Shannon McElroy lost. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a bit of a famous one, wasn't it? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, it was, yeah, well, that, that was a game for the ages, to be fair, that particular match, Alex, really. That was, um, um, yes, but this is, this is where, you know, what I'm liking about Raymond Martin, as I spoke to you before about Dave, as he now enters as well in the international arena, this is the consistency. Are we seeing weight here from Straight Dean Elgar? I quite away. like that call, early aggression. Yeah, Jack. 
I've got to do something. He's saying. Oh, no, he's tight. Yeah, I'll be disappointed with that. But I like the uh, the logic there is, you know, you think to yourself, I'm not playing well enough to draw within the, the bowl gap. So I may as well have a go. Well, he's forced to stay with that now, really, Alex. Well, we can uh, say that uh, Marty uh, Jordan, the Taranaki manager, is chatting with uh, Dean. And uh, Alan that Batley is the coach. So Marty Jordan having a bit of a chat. Yeah, it's needed. Do you go again when it's like that, Alex? One, two, three, look at that. Yeah, go. Have a go. I think he's committed, really. It has to be a jack result. You can just see by the body language that he's he's struggling in all ways. Okay, oh. on the back end, draw. Certainly, he's out in the wider country. Needs to come back quite a distance from there. Working now. Has it got... No, it hasn't. And just then he opted for the draw there. Oh, he's just... Oh, I feel sorry for Dean right now because yeah, you know, I know, uh, Alex, uh, that, that he's a far, far better player than what we've seen uh, at present this afternoon. And he's certainly beating himself up as well. There you go, Ray Martin looking just to apply a little bit more pressure as if there's not enough on already. Here's four. Holding force, so that would put him on to 23 if nothing 23. changes. He's, we... got, he's got to go to the jack now. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be able to see maybe three quarters of the jack from his end of the mat. Well, here we go, gentlemen. Let's hear you call it. Is he going to get that jack? Great he, question. Is he going for it? Well, not so much is he going to get the jack. Is he going for the jack? Just moving a little bit of chalk. A bit of chalk off the centre line. He's certainly focused looking at the target. He knows certainly he's put the time in to know where his target is. This is weight. This is in or out. On target, on target, on target, no. Oh, it's the summary of the game, isn't it? He was a, a jack a jack width away from a good result there, but he's going to drop a four. Four shots, Wellington. See, one of our lady blackjacks just arriving there. Not playing for Canterbury, Taylor Bruce, who will be part of the New Zealand contingent in Australia very shortly. Uh, you did say that Taylor Bruce is quite a precise player. Gets how are we going to work that? That she gets really quite intense in the way that she plays uh, her bowls. Is She's that right? very, very deliberate player. She's very intent on. She puts a lot of time that people don't see uh, in, into her match. You see. The one good thing, of, I'd say, of her growth and maturity, she was uh, a player that was very hard on herself, exceptionally, exceptionally hard on herself, because uh, she was one of the youngsters, of course, who came through at the same time through the secondary school program with Caitlin Lynch and Selena Goddard. And the three of them between them, of course, have, you know, we don't have to say what they've done, we know what they've done. But uh, Taylor was sort of went through a phase where she was sort of in, not in, and just sort of struggled a wee bit emotionally, I would say, struggled a wee bit with that, and uh, was very hard on herself in regards to that. Got great support with her, her two parents, who are her father, in fact, is president at Burnside, and her mother has been, uh, they run an under 26 tournament earlier in the year. And look at this now, Alex, it's just. Boy, I, I, when your confidence is like this right now, you, all you want to do is get off the green. Is, How was yeah. your confidence today, Alex? I don't want to talk about it, Dave. I tried to play into bowls. I should have just sat in front of a screen and commentated. <laughs> no, that's okay. Let's talk about this game in front of us, Dave, as we see, as we see this. Another a good shot here from Ray Martin. Holding two. You feel the players, Ray will feel like this is his last end. You know, you want to get it over and done as quickly as possible. But we did have that in our previous uh, game, didn't we? Where, what was it, from Taranaki? Um, oh, who did we have? I'm just uh, uh, going through. Sorry, um, it was Calvin Scott was in there, but he kept on getting pegged back, didn't he? Todd Taro. That's right. Dean's now going to run to his own bowl. He's talking to himself. He's, he's shot. He's... But, I would have suggested that um, Tararoa was, was gone. However, he just kept on pegging one, yeah, one so and one back. That's why Ray will want to finish at this end. Because you don't want someone 
Absolutely. You don't want them to peg away like that, Dave. So Ray's going to be you get really focused. He's 23 9 up. And, and I'm going to hurt you. This is it. This is the end. Yeah, I need to finish yeah. it. Because these people are too good. Too good to give them chances. And holding a good three here, Dean Elgar. Will he switch to the forehand? He has to. Well, he struggled to find a hand right throughout the whole game, really. And on the backhand is Elgar, knowing that. Needs to start working now to get inside the blue. The jack high bowl, not going to, it's just going to sail past. Oh. No, it stayed up on the it stayed up on the paddock, I suppose, Kev. Well, it does, and uh, game down. Regardless, after this bowl, you're game down. You've got one left. What do I do? Do I put the jack? Try and put the jack in the ditch for two. Do I try and draw the shot? Do I just go and say to my Taranaki mate, sorry boys, good luck for the next two games because, you know, this isn't the, um, you know, Dean Elgar, is, as we know, is a far, far, far better player than what we've seen today and, and, and he would be the first to admit that, look, I've just lost him. Yeah, he's just lost his way. Entirely. Yeah, so this is a, this is a, potentially his last bowl. It's to stay with a chance here. You know, if he does nail it, puts the jack into the ditch for two. He's into double figures, and maybe he'll find a way back. But it's hard to Poor, hard to see. Hard. So here is Elgin now, he's back to the mat. Just, just lost his bearings. What does he do here? He's down. He's down game, and he's going for that draw on the backhand. Needs to get inside this blue jack level bowl. I think it's over, over. It's over. He's not going to do so. That's going to sail away oh. underneath. It might hold up, though. It might oh. still be one, the jack level <laughs> How's that bowl. that for call from me? <laughs> well, I'll we'll have a look so here. Is, well, one. I've got him out the wide one. For Wellington? Oh, yes. No body language from either of the players, really. Ray's got the Ray mat. Okay. Ray's got the mat. It would indicate he thinks he's going to be putting it down to play another end, perhaps. Nope. Game set and match. Oh, there we go. It was it two. Shaking hands time. And, and there it is. 25 shots to nine. Raymond Martin of Wellington has defeated okay. Dean Elgar of Taranaki. Uh, in the first of the, the first rubber, first of three, and of course there's pairs and fours still going on. Thirteen apiece it is in the pairs, and the yeah. fifteen of eighteen. All right, we're going to shoot to some highlights of this: the singles and the good victory there of Ray Martin over Dean Alger. Uh, before we come back, well, with the pairs, perhaps even the fours.
people's match where Ray Martin ran out the winner against an out of sorts Dean Alga from Taranaki and we join the pairs now on the 15th end, 13 apiece. We see Stephen Ditford here on the forehand side playing with the white bowls. Playing with Andrew Kelly, what a shot there from Stephen Ditford, good bowl. He's getting a feather off the short one in for one. See the Taranaki lead now on the backhand side. <coughs> it's been a great game of bowls and that going on in the thumbnail at the top right of the screen and the, not far away there either. So it is Stephen Ditford holding shot. I think it's one good thing that you know, the uh, Wellington guys. Uh, Got pretty similar coloured bowls in it today, I think. <laughs> just just make it a wee bit easier. Uh, there's uh, Brendan sitting down there with the computer. Val Symes sitting there. And I know I'm sure Dean Elgar will be willing his uh, peers and fours team on to uh, try and have another attempt tomorrow as we watch Kelly. Kelly on the backhand holding one shot, 13 all as we play in 15 of 18. Willing this bowl back in. My goodness, that oh, got half some. A bowl away. Yeah, but it got some really good pull off the bank though. Uh, Alex did it. Got a really, really generous pull off the bank. And just for those of you that just to update quickly, in the men's Northland are playing Nelson, Wellington v Taranaki, Central Otago versus, versus Whanganui and Southland v Auckland. In the women, that's at Bay of Plenty playing Thames Valley, Wellington playing Nelson, Auckland playing Counties Manukau, and North Harbour uh, playing Whanganui. And of course, all of those results at the completion of play will be up on the Bowls New Zealand website. Symes now on the backhand trying to get down to the shot bowl, which is the Stephen Ditford bowl. You'll see that big draw off the bank has he got the weight to get all the way down? No, he has it. Needs to get ideally to try and get to that bowl, get a touch. Touch on the jack is generous. Remembering the court 11 8 now in the fours. We've got the other side up uh, with two to go. So this now becomes, well, really, it's a, it's a, about a five end shootout um, between the peers and the Fours. Oh, it's going to be a big finish, isn't it, Kev? So we know that uh, Wellington won the singles, and it goes on matches one. So if Wellington is to win the pairs, then they'll go through to tomorrow. If they lose this, it could come down to the fours, or vice versa, I suppose, if the fours finishes first. And the winner of this game, of course, will play the winner of the Northland Nelson match. And Craig DeFaria. I don't know whether I don't know whether Morris Symes can get around there to get that result. Can he, Alex, around his own front bowl? I don't think so. On the what about the, what about the shunt down on the other? Uh, well, yeah, I thought he, I thought Craig was looking at that the, 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 the cannon or plant he's Yeah, that, that shunt onto the front. The, 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 is that the shot that he's called? He could he just signal it's a three shot? It's a three shot chance. Absolutely. No, Morris doesn't like no, it. No. I thought it was a reasonable call, though. You've got to take yeah, the fourth I, shot. So I just thought that shot may have well been on at this stage of the game. Yeah. Oh, Morris opting to play the backhand. Very experienced. Evergreen, Morris Symes. He's been around a lot, played for New Zealand. Just think of your heart, Morris. Don't run. You don't have to run. Oh, how good could this be, Kev? He's on his backhand. Hasn't got the weight. What a waste of good green. He'll be thinking of himself, and he's and blocked Of course, he's cut that other shot off now. Yeah. Yeah, I just and I, at end 15, you're, you know, I just think it was worth the go to be fair with that. That's why God gave you three bowls. <laughs> oh, he's got a third one there. You can see it just behind Andrew Kelly. 
He's delivered his bowl on the forehand. They're holding one with Wellington, but they don't have second, third, fourth, or fifth shot at the moment. It still looks like there's a way to cannon that white bowl out that's sitting at 9 o'clock to the jack to me, Kev. I still think there's a two-shot chance on, to cannon out. If on it, the forehand. If it's jack level, it can go. And look. It'll go out clean on the forehand side. You know, you hit that, that blue bowl or whatever colour it is that sits at 10 o'clock to the jack. It'll pop the white bowl off. You'll sit there for at least two, maybe three, maybe four. Well, Craig Defari is pretty, in, he's pretty uh, intent, isn't he? He thinks that's, that's a shot that's on. So here is 13 apiece as we play in 15 of 18. Morris Symes. Absolutely a man who's capable of playing this bowl. Here is Symes now on that forehand weighted shot that we spoke about, trying to get that cannon. He's got the right weight trying for it, Kev. Trying to get that cannon. Oh, just needs to be a bowl wider, really. Is any luck? Any luck? Bad luck, two oh, down. The reverse of good luck. I think three. he's three down now, Morris Symes. Right. That was a result from, from the depths of hell there. He, he had the shot for half a minute on the way through. <laughs> He did for a second. It was beautiful. He played it with absolutely beautiful weight. Give it with a cannon that shot out for three or four, but he was a bit narrow, and that's gone poorly for the Taranaki side. They were one down. But I will say this, three. Alex, that that's why I think it was best to play it with the second bowl, because if it did go dirty, you had a chance with the third bowl to to save the situation. Yeah. Big hats off to uh, Wanganui, uh, one of our smaller centres. And both men and women threw into the quarterfinals, which uh, is, a, is a fantastic achievement uh, from uh, Wanganui. And also good to see the Northland men. They, got, they won their way through. And Thames Valley, what a, you know, that's a fantastic achievement for the Thames Valley uh, ladies. They are through to the, in, in, into the, uh, they're playing Bay of Plenty right now. So that uh, three. Robbie Bird, I see he's got the mat in the fours match over there with Wellington leading 11-8. It's sort of now looking good for Wellington. It is looking good for Wellington, certainly. And some, you see some clapping there in that thumbnail in the Wellington fours combination. And they'll be able to see they're, they're sharing a, a green. You can see there the Wellington shirts just to the right of your screen. <laughs> so everyone will know what the situation is. Everyone will know that Ray Martin won the singles. Well, I think it's fair to say, though, Alex, that if you were, you know, if you're looking at teams on paper and you were looking at seedings, uh, Wellington would be, if not your number one seed, number two seed, with the makeup of their side. It's a very well, good team. I, I think the, the very fact that uh, Seamus Curtin is sitting on the bench for this <laughs> round tells you that tells you, you a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, it does. That, so that, that highlights the strength. And I must say, as, as we at singles games finished, uh, a big thank you to uh, to uh, Mike Small and Kevin Gore, who have been our markers today for the two games that we've covered. They've done a wonderful job as our mark as they always do. And isn't it good, Alex, when you uh, commentated or have got singles when you've got markers who who are confident you know what's going on yeah they, it's good for everybody isn't it, it? Yeah, they let you know what's happening there's no perhaps it's uh yeah it's it's tremendous to have markers of that uh, of that caliber Craig on his backhand side of course just a reminder because uh we're down to the quarterfinals of this national under center means the results should come in a reasonable speed. Give sometimes when you're in section play, it takes a while for the clubs to get the oh, results back. I goodness, was send a them few... through carrier pigeon or something. <laughs> well, but uh, with the down to the quarterfinals, it's not carrier pigeon. It's through through quicker means. Well, there was, so, a, there was a few people there today who thought the results were coming by tiger moth. <laughs> <laughs> so just uh, keep your eyes peeled on the polls you see on the website. And not too long after the broadcast finishes, we should have uh, down who's down to the semi-finals to play tomorrow. Of course, starting. At a bright and early 8.30 in the morning, the, the semi-finals yes. of this event will start. And we'll be here commentating for the semi-finals and the finals. Which will bring to a conclusion, I think, a very successful uh, inter-centre event where we had 26 men's teams from around the country line up and 25 women's sides uh, line up. And that's a compliment, I think, to 
the uh, how this event is sort of held in the esteem of the various centres. That's a great entry, really, Alex. Shows there's that? demand there, doesn't it? Abs- you've got a absolutely. Every, Abs- every district participating, and that's a poor end there from Craig. You'll be disappointed with that if we think back to the previous end. He had second, third, and fourth shot on the crossover. Absolutely. This end, that's not the case, and Morris Symes is going to have to do some heavy lifting. Uh, three down, two to go, so he'll be looking to score at least one point on this end. It's interesting you mentioned Seamus she- Curtin, uh, Alex. Um, it highlights to me that that you know the selectors in Wellington they've got confidence in all of this squad. No one's you know no one's better than this one or whatever. They you know same as Curtin. You know if you said at the start well Seamus is going to be on the bench you know, come finals time, uh, you'd be somewhat surprised. But you know you've got to take your head off the selectors. They think this is our best combination. Uh, it's going to work for us. And so far, so good. Yeah, and of course, the um, the eighth player has a key role to play as well. And I mean, we all know uh, if you watch Seamus play bowls, how supportive he is of his very, teammates anyway. Very much so. So, uh, as an eighth person goes, I think it's a pretty good call from the Wellington things. He'll be flitting around. Uh, he will have been flitting around today, making sure that his team was all well supported. And that's one of the roles that those players uh, can play. As we see Andrew Kelly here on his backhand, very deliberate style. And the head looking good for them, of course. Probably holding the shots. Stephen Ditford calling them down the hill. Well, playing in 16. 16 13. Taranaki must really score now. Symes, very. Himself look has he got the jack? Oh, yes, he has. Crank got it around what a the, ball. the corner, moved it far enough. That'll be two, I would say. That what a great that was just fantastic. That beer from it's, just two, it's two, isn't it, Alex? Yeah, at least two. And he called on all of his experience there. Absolutely brilliant. Got the check clean. Kelly on his backhand. Definitely down on the head. How far is it going to move back now? He's chasing it. He's stalking it. Is it going to get all the way? Keep going. That's good, mate. That's great. Second shot was the call. Thanks, Rick. See, I can see the South Canterbury boys around the back, as, as we always know. There's a lot of good shots being played up there at the moment. <laughs> always easier when you're watching. Absolutely, signs on the backhand after playing that magnificent bowl with his second, holding one, trailing 16 to 13 as we play in 16. How's your weight, Morris? Needs to have the weight to get down to that bowl. Not going to do so. And Stephen Gittenfit quickly conceding. Craig Defaria, though, he's going to put the measure into the bowls just to be 100% sure. And is the one 16 14 to Wellington. And knowing that Wellington also lead, have won the singles, as we said. And are leading 13 8 as we play in 14 of 15 of the fours. Mm. The stage looking strong for Wellington. And, and based on that result, Kev, if you are a Wellington supporter, it's, you could almost start to feel, I wouldn't say confidence that your team being through the semi final, but it'd be a happier place to be a Wellington supporter at the moment than a Taranaki one. You'd be feeling quite good. You'd think so. Yeah, you'd be feeling quite good. And Wellington come through this encounter. They'll play tomorrow. That being the case, they get through. They'll and they'll play the winner of the Northland v Nelson game, which is uh, underway uh, on these greens at present as well. And Central Otago versus uh, Wanganui Southland v Auckland. And of course, as I said before, it was Auckland who were the winners. 
our uh, last winners, of course, in, 19, in, in, uh, in 2022. And the year before that, in 21, it was Southland. So the, the last two winners of the National Under Centre playing one another now in the quarterfinals. And in the women, it is by a plenty v Thames Valley. Wellington playing Nelson. It's a big, that's a big matchup. That's that, a uh, massive matchup. That's a isn't matchup. That quarterfinal, uh, Auckland versus Counties Manukau, and North Harbour versus uh, Wangaroa. What is interesting though, Alex, is all the bottom of the draw is the North Auckland Counties, North Harbour, Wangaroa. Yeah, that well, one can never you mean. Sorry, oh, the, the bottom one. Sorry, my apology. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> sorry, it's Ren- getting late. Sorry, Reen Stratford. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, what a great effort from Wanganui to, uh, to make it through. I think they've won, we figured out they won the Intercentre once before in the uh, yes, Kelsey days of Wanganui Bowls in 1984-ish, four or five. They, uh, uh, Wanganui won the uh, Intercentre in, uh, in 1984. Ah, I was right the first time, that's yeah, good. In 1984, the Wanganui men won the, uh, the men's and with the women at, uh, at this point in time, their name hasn't yet been engraved since uh, the start of 1983 through to uh, 2022 that uh, Wanganui's name hasn't yet been uh, engraved on the trophy. Who knows? Will it be this year? Anything could happen, Kev, as we see Craig here on his backhand. So they trail 14-16, the penultimate end. Taranaki with the bowls that are not white. And Craig doesn't look too happy with that one. Sort of half followed up and then went back for a walk. I would suggest that's why he's just overplayed that bolt. Interesting, uh, with the Taranaki side, I was somewhat surprised to see Craig Defari uh, leading. Uh, and that because, you know, as, as you would know, well know, Alex, he's traditionally been a skip uh, in the, in the uh, Taranaki Open uh, for a number of years and been successful mm. as well. Uh, in, in, in winning the oh, course. To be fair, most skips will tell you that they can be, make good leads, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> Leading's easy when you're skipping, isn't well, it? Morris, so that was the logic there. Well, Morris Symes will tell me now who's, who should be playing the singles with Taranaki. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, we see the crossover here. So, what's the situation? Looks like potentially probably a measure for shot between the bowl at 12 the, and the bowl uh, of 6. Fr- uh, front bowl, Symes. His delivery hasn't changed in 40 years. Uh, it hasn't back in those amber black, blacks of which, of course, he won the national pairs with Jeff Hawkin and was part of the Taranaki winning in, in the centre side. Beautiful. Look at that there, Morris Symes just drawing the shot. He's done that a million times in his career and that wouldn't be too much of an exaggeration. No, uh, he certainly has. Certainly has. And because Taranaki winners of the in the centre on uh, seven occasions, so uh, they're the third highest uh, winning province. It'll be one of the most successful North Island provinces. Oh, they, they, they the are the most, the they, uh, they, well, Wellington, uh, no, they are the most uh, successful North Island uh, centre. Uh, uh, Auckland, uh, Auckland five, Manawa two, three, Wellington two. So yeah, they certainly, uh, Taranaki they still lead the way. Certainly something to be rightfully proud of as we see Morris Symes here on the forehand again. He's just put one on the jack. Can he make it two? Well, well he, he sits on the back of the bowl and just right, goes right, through. Just about, but not quite. I just wonder, Alex, I ask you the question as well with, you know, Taranaki. I think one of the reasons why Taranaki has always been fairly consistent is the greens that they present themselves and play on on a regular basis in, yep. in, in, in Taranaki. Yeah, it's a brilliant system, isn't it? The way the way it works in the Taranaki region. They've had the um, the Taranaki Open for the best part of just about 120 years now, I think. And that the system that creates is one where your Absolutely. greens are always... They, they have to be good. <laughs> well, they have to be good or the event doesn't happen. Um, we'll be there next year for the... Um, the uh, uh, Somerset National Fours yep. and the mixed pairs because we were to play there a couple of years ago, but uh, COVID put paid to that. But the next Symes look at this from Morris Symes. He needs. Oh, he, he deserved better. To yeah, be fair. it was a bit of class. Uh, just like have a played. So the 
course, the end of centre was to the, sorry, the fours and the pairs were to be played in Taranaki a couple of years back, but of course got COVID damaged, but now back next year, uh, we'll be back in Taranaki, and that doesn't affect the running of the uh, Taranaki Open fours, that will still go ahead. And the, um, just quickly, Kev, the, the fours now, on your thumbnail, is on their final end, and Taranaki trails by four, 13-9. Well, so this could be shake hands anyway. Yeah, the, the fours will finish first by the look, so just keep an eye on that because if you are following how this is going, if Taranaki wins that game, if they pick up a five on this end, it's going to come down to the pairs that's in front of us. If they don't, it's all over, over for Taranaki. So and looking, back again next year. Is looking Andrew for Kelly? the trail. Looking for the trail. Or oh, 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 well shot. played from Andrew Kelly. Absolute class there. That's a class shot. Toucher on the trail, just caressed the jack and turned it into a one to make it now, or well, one end to go, it's 17 14 now. Yeah, it's the difference between being all square last end and three up last end, isn't uh, it? As well played, just got, and uh, it's good to see that some of our leading players have been here at the crunch end and playing those big shots and. Uh, as we saw earlier on, for example, with, with Raymond Martin showing his drawing consistency uh, and on the day he was just too good for Dean Elgar. Oh, he's in some fine form, uh, Ray Martin, and going into the, the multi-nations, his debut for New Zealand coming up in uh, just over a week's time now. Ray's surely got to be feeling pretty good about his bowls game. He certainly will be. Well, I would be if I was him. <laughs> just sort of the amount of times the highlights we had on before, the amount of times we had four bowls within a couple of feet of the jack. Well, if we look at that New Zealand side just quickly now, uh, we've got Andrew Kelly. He's out there playing, playing now. Lance Pascoe, Kelvin Scott. They're, they're, there, you know, they're, they're at there. the pointy end. Uh, they're, they're at the pointy end. And uh, okay, Chris Leaves not here because... Uh, because he's he's in Australia, but you know uh, Tony Gretson. So we've more than likely got of all of the New Zealand players playing in the Indescender. Um, I think they're all sitting there at, at the at the pointy end. Yep, absolutely. So it's a good re a good sign, really, in a reflection of the form that they're in. As we saw, Craig Defaria, he'll be really disappointed with that pole. You three down last end. He would have been aiming for that two-meter mark, wouldn't he, Keith? You get one pass oh, for your first absolutely. ball. Absolutely. Work it's backwards from there. Shame. And, you know, really you know, providing, you know, Stephen Ditford um, owns that meter around the around the jack, you know, you're not going to get into too many. You're not going to get into too much trouble, are you, Defaria? Got a bit of line with this ball. How far is it going to move line, back now? Coming back now towards the center line. Needs to pick it up. Oh, he sliced it like instead, but he followed it. a little. Not More than likely shot. Not the end of the world, but he could have. <laughs> he would have been hoping for a better result than he that. He would have been, and as Alex rightly said, playing the last end now in the fours. Yes, just keep an eye on that. Thirteen for nine, Wellington. And I see applause there from uh, Blake Signal to Caleb Hope as I watch Steve Ditfit now. Uh, it's well played, well led from the Wellington lead draws just in behind the jack. Would be surprising if Craig was short here. He'll be looking to reach a little bit. He's got a bowl to rest on on his backhand side. He's taken a high line. Well, he's certainly out on the wide side past that front bowl, isn't it? It needs to come a long way back to get to that. Well, if he can get second shot, no, he didn't third either. shot. Really need another half a metre to get into the target, and then Symes can attack that. It's going to be the challenge now on the crossover. It'll be tempting almost to be aggressive with your first ball. Well, I was going to say, he's going to have to attack it at some stage, one would think. Yeah, may as well. For a penny and for a pound, having a ball with your first one. Really needed to change over holding two, Alex, didn't they, the Taranaki side? Yeah, for a good chance, for an easier chance of scoring a four, it would have, that would have been, yeah, for sure. It means now we look at this, Morris is probably going to have to play three really good bowls. And look at, like he's looking next door as well. And of course, as you know, this is what happens when you're playing at this format. And he's looking at what's going on over there. Is there a chance for them? Is there a chance for them? How many are they holding? See Hamish Carpey looking at the head. 
Stephen Ditford steering this one down. This bowl of Andrew Kelly's asking it to hold. Now, let's see what Morris Symes up to play here. He's a man with a lot of experience at this game. He'll know how he's going to find it. He'll have a plan for where his four is coming from. I don't know what that plan is, but he'll have one. Well, the first thing is he's got to be reaching to where that bowl is to have. And he's certainly doing that. Good call, Morris. And he's going to try and get to that bowl early. Needs to hold now. Now he's in trouble. Unless. Lucky. Could get lucky. Unless. Oh. Well, I took one out. I think the only thing you could say about that is that he did play it with beautiful weight. So, Jack movement with his bowls th can be three. Yeah, and he played it with, I mean, he was narrow, but he played it with beautiful weight. His collision bowl finished level with the Jack. He had, it was good weight. And he's got a chance here if Andrew Kelly doesn't cover. That's where you see at the bottom left of your screen. Uh, Ditfit has put his his cloth in. Well, he said, this needs to come back a long it. way because that's on the fat side on the way past. Now, the, the, the hardest thing for Morris Symes is what that line looks like under that front bowl to get to the jack. That's yeah. the... Yeah, it's... He's going to be going very close to that white bowl that sits at 2 o'clock yeah, to just, the jack, isn't Just it? all but touch that, that white bowl um, to get to the jack on the trail and, and knowing that you've got to be up th through the head as well. So here is Symes. Knows what he's got to play down under. Well, when's it going to turn, well, Kev? If it starts turning now, too when's it early. going to break? Now it breaks. He's got that. Look well, at that perfect weight again. Ball. Another wick. Nearly. No, now he's got. Now, now he's got trouble. Yeah, he could now a, a draw is. He could get three for a draw, four for a win. There's not enough bowls on the ring no, for four for not. a win. And there are skips. They're over it at, in the fours now. They're over it. Skips on the head. So, does Morris wait to see what happens with the fours and then try and kill it? Well, I thought he might have just then, actually, because uh, it's out, that bowl. You just see Morris Symes signalling that it is out. So just here, yeah, let's keep an eye on the fours game. Look at the body language. We don't have stickers, unfortunately, and uh, in this world where we have 27 different colours of bowl, yes, sort of correct, you know, there's no way of knowing. So, body language is your best call for the fours. So Andrew Kelly will try and get deep on the ring. Yeah, Morris, Morris is Symes is looking over on the other ring. I think that's quite that's a bit of experience for Morris. Oh, absolutely, I, I like that. So absolutely, what he's doing is saying, look, I have a really, I have a potentially a very important bowl to play. I may as well wait until the fours have completed, and then I know whether I need to play it or not. Well, Taranaki gave a lot of applause then. So what's now, the story on a draw? Remind me, Kit. What happens if the game's draw in a post section? Half. Half. And then uh, it goes on point stuff. So if the fours drew and the pairs drew. I think Caleb Hope just indicated that we are two down. Okay. Well, let's just I, keep our I eyes just, peeled. Because I just heard him say, been pointed to a bowl that it, that it beat another bowl. So that bowl of signals is. Make, make five. five. Just heard him. Make five. Make he said. five. I think Morris. Morris is surely going to he's wait not, for this last bowl here. Morris signs up playing his bowl to this one's a bit on its way. That I can assure you. Just keep an eye peeled on that thumbnail. Hamish Carpi. Taranaki looking to move the jack a little bit. Body language not telling us anything from anyone. Well, he did it in the final of the training. He he's fours. chasing it now. Chasing it now. Where's the jack going? He's on the narrow side. Oh, went out to the side. So Shake hands. So Morris delivered his bowl, but it is Wellington, Amos Carpi, and Demi to try and uh, get a touch on the jack through the hole for five shots, not to be so. Morris Symes gets the jack but goes sideways, <laughs> and that will be after we saw earlier on, we saw uh, the uh, singles, well, that was a bit of a one-horse race, really, and uh, we saw Raymond Martin defeat Dean Elgar quite convincingly uh, in the singles, a tight encounter in the pairs between uh, Morris Symes and, uh, and, his, and, and his lead Craig Defaria up against Stephen Ditford and Andrew Kelly and we just saw the fours come to completion so tomorrow morning we will have in the semi-finals we know we've got one of the semi-finals we know that Wellington uh, are through and they'll play the winner of the Northwood Nelson game Central Otago at Preston are playing Wanganui Southland are playing Auckland and then the women they have plenty of playing Thames Valley 
Wellington are playing Nelson, Auckland are playing Counties Manukau, North Harbour are playing Wanganui, and at the completion of those quarter-final matches, all of those results will be up on the Bowls New Zealand website, and of course we'll be back at 8.30am tomorrow morning, where we'll be bringing you live semi-final action from the Bowls New, Ze Bowls New Zealand Centre Championship at the sunny and no-win perfect conditions at the Burnside Bowling Club in Christchurch.